Welcome to the Transform with Vance podcast, where transformations begin every day, and I am your host, Vance Hines. So let's get started. All right, this is Vance Hines, and I'm here with another DDP yoga success story, Rocco Lorenzo. And, and you know he's a success story by the banner behind his head. So, Rocco, how you doing, man? Got the shirt, too. Oh, and his shirt. <laughs> All right, he's representing... I'm doing. Oh, yeah. I'm doing good. How are you, Vance? Oh shit! I can't complain. I can't complain. Right on. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm coming in like I told you, coming in this blind. I don't know your story, but if Steve Yu says you've got a great success story that I need to hear, <laughs> you, that's about as good a recommendation as it comes. So I didn't hesitate. I wanted to get you. Right on. Well, it's a real pleasure to to be on here with you, and thank you for inviting me. All right, man. Thank you for doing this. Um, what I've been asking the other people is to just give a brief uh, summary or synopsis of why they are con- why you are considered a DDP yoga success story, and then and then to kind of get their attention of why uh, you know what success you had with the program and stuff, and then I go back and just start deposing you like I would if you were a, 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 a opposing client. Or <laughs> All right, sounds good. Well, um, brief story. I, um, I've battled with a lot of health issues. Uh, even before I was born, <laughs> my mom had a lot of different uh, health problems during the pregnancy, things like that, so... Uh, throughout my life, I, yeah, I've had a lot of a lot of different things uh, I've dealt with, and I'll go into those a bit later. But um, about a year ago, I committed to doing DDPY, and um, it's it's really helped me turn my life around. And um, yeah, I, it's I say it's one of those things that. It's not just doing the exercises or following the nutrition. It kind of uh, it kind of becomes a lifestyle, and it affects everything you do. So, I really let it just uh, push me in all those directions that I I could go to make some positive changes in my life. So, that's that's the Reader's Digest version. <laughs> all right, ma'am. Where are you from? Where's home? Um, I was born in Saskatchewan, Canada. It's a province up here. Um, it's kind of like the Texas of Canada, if I had to. Uh, a lot of people say that. So um, I've been here. I'm 32 years old now. It was just my birthday a couple weeks ago, so I'm freshly 32 happy birthday (laughs) thank you very much man appreciate it um yeah so i grew up here and been here ever since i've done a lot of a lot of traveling um i used to work as a i did photography for a while so that kind of took me to a lot of different countries and um yeah i've seen seen quite a bit of the world so it's been it's been good. I love traveling, but uh, it's always nice to be home. So Saskatchewan, what, where is it in Canada? What part? It's, it's like dead center, dead center of the country. So it's kind of nice because, I mean, Canada's a giant-ass country, so <laughs> it's nice you can kind of get out one way or the other way uh, and see bits and pieces of the country. I've never actually made it all the way across Canada, but I've... I've put some effort in for sure. So if you went due south, what state would you hit first? Uh, I would be North Dakota, I believe. Oh, man, North Dakota. Yep. All right, let me double check on a map. I don't want to give you wrong info. So is it, um, is weed legal up there? Is it like British Columbia? Yes, it is, yeah. The entire country, it's legal. Um... Yeah, right below me, Montana, North Dakota. Oh, man. 
And so it's uh, so uh, you out in the country? Is it like bears and and um, uh, country? You know, that's, is it you out in the wilderness? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's real small here. Our population is teeny tiny, and uh, yeah, just a lot of the great outdoors. You know, lots of camping, hiking, fishing, hunting. You know, that sort of that sort of lifestyle. I think we got uh, there's over a hundred thousand lakes in our province so there's always a new lake to go uh go try and do some fishing at or just kick up your feet and do some reading or do some ddpy whatever <laughs> and and you can just walk into any to a store and buy weed yep right? you betcha yeah i've i've done it before i was never a you <laughs> never a user before much i i tried a bit when i was younger but uh it started to become kind of a part of my routine now. It definitely helps with a lot of my aches and pains, and uh, um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I'm I'm glad that the country legalized because everybody was doing it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you smoke it like outside anywhere? You can, I think, except for on public property, unless it's allowed. But. Uh, yeah, like you can go in your backyard if you're out for a walk, things like that. I think in parks you can, um, just not indoors. Hmm. So do, is it y'all got brown bears or black bears? Uh, we got brown and black, yeah. Two kinds. The further north you go, uh, there's even polar bears up north in the province here. But it's uh, it's a huge province. Like it takes me probably take you twenty hours to drive from one side to the other if you went from uh, south to north or north to south. I'm drinking me a, a um, smoothie. That's my lunch. I just got. All right, on. What do you put in your? I'm all, what do you put in your smoothie there, Venice? Uh, this is uh, the Orgain plant-based pro protein we get at costco and it's got almond milk and uh, flax seed chia seed um spinach it's got um some frozen berries i think some blueberries or we get these packets from costco too you can stick in there some kind of mary made it some kind of frozen fruits in it all right sounds delicious yeah it's good it fills me up man all the flax seed and everything oh that's good no that's real good and then i got some hot tea oh i love tea hey, love tea i got me some earl gray uh, steeping over here oh. so you'll see me move to a cup when my smoothie's delicious done. hey hey um so do you do cold plunges up there <laughs> I, I have before. It's not something I do regularly, but uh, yeah, I've tried it before. I've tried, you know, going from a hot tub and jumping into a snowbank, things like that. <laughs> Did it help? Um, it definitely uh, resets you, you know. Like the the body goes into a bit of shock, and it's a pretty uh, surreal feeling, that's for sure. I um, I went out to, to the lake and did a cold plunge. It's my first one ever. <clears throat> Ten minutes. The temperature was forty-eight degrees. Oh. So, and then I, then I went and got a sauna for thirty minutes. So I'm I'm recovering from. How that. did it make you feel? It's my first time. Well, I'm still kind of cold. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. This is Texas, you know. <laughs> but the, yeah, the temperature outside was uh, forty-nine when I got out of the truck to get in, and when I came in it was in the 50s so it was rising but but uh but the water was pretty chilly i mean it took me a while for my thumbs and some of the fingers to not be numb no kidding well yeah that's still pretty chilly i mean yeah. uh we're today it is what is it it's 32 today outside and that's it's a warm that's a warm day for us in winter um, usually you can, like in January, we're usually around minus 22 Fahrenheit. So it's, uh, yeah, don't forget your jacket. That's for sure. Yeah. 
So you got uh, heaters on your car batteries and all yeah, that? Yeah, we got to plug in our cars uh, during the day and overnight. Cause a lot of times they don't start, the battery will freeze up. And um, But, you know, in the summertime, it's like it gets up to 95 here. So it's wow. it's crazy. Yeah, we're uh, I think we're the hottest and coldest place in Canada. I think something about right. being centralized there. We kind of kind of get a little bit of everything. So are you in the mountains or you're no? The we're, prairie, we're like the bald prairie here. Yeah. Oh man. Well, you go okay, up, you go up north and it's all uh, lots of dense bush, uh, but the southern half of the province is is pretty bald, rolling hills, lots of hills everywhere. But yeah, it's a nice landscape. How far are you from the Arctic Circle? Oh, geez. Well, I don't know. You can't, you couldn't drive here from here because there's no roads that go that far north. But uh, but the, the Arctic Circle does come down in the top of Yeah, the yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. I know it comes down through Alaska. Up there by Barlow and all that. Yeah, I wonder if it does it graze across the, the top of our province here. Mm. Oh, we're still still a ways from it. Still a ways. Still a yeah. ways. Uh, <laughs> south of the Arctic. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's still far north, but we're still pretty far south in the grand scheme of things. Oh man. Uh dude, what um <clears throat> You said you were a photographer. What, tell me about and it traveled. You traveled with it. Tell me about. Yeah, that. yeah. I, um, I've always. Well, I wasn't always a creative person. I, uh, growing up, I was, I was fairly active. Played a lot of sports, and um, I think you know, kind of like a regular kid, you're always kind of a busy body, that sort of stuff. But um, when I was about eight years old. I um, I got really sick with some stomach problems, and I got diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And I was like, what the heck's that? Of course, I was eight. I had no idea what's going on, but I um, had a lot of trouble with that for about four years. I was in and out of the hospital all the time and on morphine and all these different drugs and uh, really messed with my my body, you know, you take one medication to fix one thing and you get 10 new symptoms, right? <laughs> so yeah. anyway, it was kind of tough around there. And when I was 14, my, uh, my intestine ruptured and I almost died. That was a big, big change for me. I had emergency surgery. It was at 14? 14 years old. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And, uh, I spent about two months in the hospital recovering, and uh, after that, I I was did you, did you, sorry. Go ahead. Did you lose a bunch of your your intestines or your colon or anything? Yeah, yeah. They took out. I can't even remember how many feet. I think it's about three feet of the large one and six feet of the small one, something like that. So, um, missing a bit of that. Put you they put you on a colostomy bag for a while? No, luckily not. I, uh, I remember saying to the surgeon, <laughs> I said, I don't want a bag. I don't want a bag. And, of course, she said, well, can't make any promises. But yeah. luckily, uh, luckily they were able to hook it back together. And I couldn't eat. I didn't eat any food for about a month and a half. So it was a full liquid diet. Um, I had a feeding tube they gave me just to keep my, you know, my nourishment up. But I was so thin. You know, I was under, I was about 91 pounds when I was 15 years old. And a lot of times when I went into the doctor, the hospital, they just assumed I was there for uh, weight issues, you know, being anorexic or something like that, right? But no, I just had these stomach problems. But anyway, um, after all that, I kind of didn't do anything physical for a long time. 
And that's when I started getting into music, photography, you know, all these artistic things. And, uh, you know, looking back how hard that time period was, it was such a blessing because I got to open up my world to all these new things, right? So that's when I started getting into doing some landscape photography. And then I moved into doing, you know, portraits, things like that. And eventually I was getting hired to do weddings. And uh, people were traveling for their weddings. They're doing destination weddings, things like that. So, yeah, I got to go down to the U.S. I've, I've been through California. I've been through Tennessee. Uh, I've been to Las Vegas a couple times and uh, Minneapolis there. And some of the tropical places I've been to. Jamaica, Dominican, Mexico, spent a while in Italy, I've been to Germany, uh, and then just all over Canada too, so. Was it was this for the for the weddings or for the landscape photography? Yeah, a little bit of both, a little bit of both, so it was nice to, I always love doing, you know, abstract landscape sort of stuff, but I mean, of course, weddings pay the pay your bills so had to had to keep up with weddings too so i always always thought you know I, do you know who uh, candy herndon is oh, or DDP? oh man yeah candy's been she was the reason i started ddpy absolutely uh, well you know she's into uh, event photography did you know I, that? I did not know she was into photography did not know that she works yeah she works uh, for her evidently her um I think it's her uncle. I may be okay. getting the story wrong, but I, but I I listened to her podcast. But he, evidently, he's a big event photographer in New York. Wow! Oh, that's and cool. they and they do like yeah, fashion shows, and she does like the uh, the I think the the networking, you know, setting them up, making sure all the computers set up for all the photographers and stuff. And, and she works from my home, and I think, I don't know all exactly, but uh, she was naming all the big events that they they do. And and this guy evidently, is, and I creeped on their website, evidently he's, uh, her uncle's like one of the big names there. And like um, like she said, one, they they recently got it, made it, made a, an agreement with Getty. Oh wow! Getty stock photos, yeah, and so they're doing something for Getty. Oh and, yeah, stock photos. That's that's the business to be in for sure. Wow, that's amazing. I have to, I'll have to talk to her about it sometime. Yeah, you need to get. She's been doing it for shit years and years. She started with her uncle when she was young, I think, just answering the phone, and she's moved up through the job and. And, um, uh, but she, I mean, it sounded pretty interesting because I was asking her I, I, the same thing. I, like I just told you, I always thought a wedding photographer had, had pretty stressful <laughs> job. Oh, yeah. You know, because if you screw it up, everybody's pissed off. If you screw up the well, once in a lifetime, supposedly once in a lifetime event, everybody's pissed That's off. That's right. Yeah. I always, I always say, well, hopefully we don't have to do this again, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, but, yeah, that's well, she cool. Yeah, was, she was talking about, about doing those fashion shows. She said, you're talking about stress, doing those. And celebrities, you know, people coming in, and celebrities hit trying to get them. Yeah, and, and, no uh, kidding. That would be a lot of stress, too, for sure. you got to be on top mm -hmm. of your game there, yeah. Except I couldn't, couldn't, kept, couldn't get out of my mind. She, she kept talking about these fashion shows, and she'd be set up in the back. And all these models and photographers and makeup and everybody would be doing their things around her. It'd be a panic, you know. And I just kept thinking, you know, that ain't a bad job sitting back here in the back and looking at all those models <laughs> changing clothes and getting there. That's right, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I kind of lost focus on the conversation <laughs> for a little while. The imagination <laughs> was running wild after that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> And of course, I went straight to Victoria's. Yeah, Street. that's right. Yeah, lingerie fashion shows. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. But anyway, man, so, so where, if I wanted to see some of your landscape photos, where would we go? Oh, you know, I haven't, I used to have a website and I, I had a nice portfolio, portfolio on there. And I just haven't kept up with it. I haven't, 
You know, since COVID, I haven't touched my camera in almost two years here. It's got dust on it, and I'm just feeling like a failure over here. But, you know, your interests change and things go different directions. And um, I just became a father a few months ago. And I just been Congratulations. oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's 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 that's the best thing ever. And I've just been pouring all my energy and time into it, and uh, it's it's been great. But I, you know, one day I want to get back to photography and uh, get that portfolio up there again. I'm not. It's funny, like as much as uh, you know, as powerful as the internet is. I don't really use it that much. <laughs> like it's there and you can do awesome things like these podcasts and connect with communities. And I just, I know how to use it. I just don't tap into it that, that much. So that's something, something I want to do a little more of maybe in the future here. So definitely been inspired by your podcast, Vance. Like I've, well, thank you. I love what you're doing. You got the website, you got, you're big on social media, and I think that's so brave. Like, I'm such a private person, and uh, I don't know what it is. Internet just scares me or something. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it did me too, and, and everybody said I was crazy. He said, you know, uh, I was going to have all these creeps, and they were going to be stealing my shit. Everybody knew what, my, you know, what I was doing every day. I, I don't know. But, I, you know, there were so many warnings, and, and, uh, but I, I just, you know, at first I did it just because I, I needed to do, do something different, you know, uh, nothing else had worked. So I was going to give it a try. And then after that, so many good blessings came from it, you know, meeting at DDPY and meeting. And so I just keep, um, I just keep pushing, pushing further into the, into the, into the social media world, you know, I just keep uh keep paying it forward you know oh, good for you man i really i really love what you're doing and uh to be you know to be brave like that and recognize you need to try something new to uh make a change right so if it's fueling you all the power to you brother well, that's thank great you, thank you but uh, hey on the Crohn's, I always heard that once they take out some of those intestines and stuff, that when you eat, you you ought to be sitting on the table. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I can, it's like clockwork, you know, I, depend, <laughs> depending on what I eat, so yeah. it's funny, like, again, it was kind of a blessing to me that having those stomach problems, I was forced, like, I had to have a good diet ever since I was a kid, and having the Crohn's, I was shitting myself all the time. <laughs> like, yeah. So I, I, for me, I came into DDPY, and I've always approached exercise from the opposite side. I've always been so thin and weak, you know, just like this scrawny, yeah. just like a, a rake out in the yard. Like that's, <laughs> that's kind of how I've been. So it's like always been a challenge for me to, to put on weight and, uh, get healthy right because once you find that balance it's like that's your healthy zone and everybody's a little bit different right depending on your body and your height and your genetics and all those wonderful things so uh, you know if you're battling illness or things like that so i've kind of i've always been on the skinny side of things and and just in the past year i've been able to gain about 40 pounds so that's a big deal for me, you know. Um, From what do you credit it to? I I've been following the DDPY nutrition, and so I've been trying to do it in a healthy way, eating a lot of protein. So I eat light chicken like three times a day. I got chicken coming out of my ears, like. <laughs> but it's great, like it's, it's, uh, and just shakes, you know, doing the shakes in between meals. It's a little extra for me just to get some extra healthy calories in, throw some protein powder in there, whatever. And, uh, you know, if we got some spinach in the house or something that's going bad, I'll freeze that, throw it in my shakes and use that as some, some crushed up ice in the mix there. So 
I think just being more conscious of what I'm putting into my body and how I'm using my body and um, just trying to do it in a healthy way. Um, for, for a couple months last year, I was going through a pretty deep depression and I was eating like crap. And uh, so I put on a lot of unhealthy weight then. Hi, puppy. <laughs> that's a that's a jet. jet. She's thirteen. Oh wow! Hi, Jet. What a beautiful dog. Yeah, and she'll uh, she'll um, she's very vocal. She's very demanding. <laughs> she likes to get in on the podcast. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so at some point, she's gonna uh, start talking. Oh, that's to us. great. But but yeah, just just really trying to do it in a healthy way. Um, but yeah, I did put on some unhealthy weight. I'm, I'm, what am I, I'm 192 pounds now, and that's... And you said that's 40 pounds, how tall are you? I'm about six feet tall, so I'm... Oh, shit, that's good. Yeah, yeah, so I think it's, I think it's pretty good, I feel, I feel pretty good, um, but yeah, that's... What's, what's, what's... What's your ideal weight by the by the BMI index? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. You ought to be you ought to be right at it at, at one hundred ninety six foot. I, I think I think you so. Be pretty close. I think so. Yeah. But you, yeah, yeah. what 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 is it the um, since you're missing the, all those? You, you know, I I've been thinking. <clears throat> I've never known any uh, kids that had Crohn's or at least had Crohn's to that. Uh, severe severity. Uh, you know, I've known some adults, and as they got older, had those uh, te- intestines removed and ended up on the colostomy bag and stuff. Yeah. But the, um, but you, uh, I mean, is it common in kids? No, um, I remember, you know, being. I had stomach problems my whole life, and my parents always just thought I was a picky eater or something like that. And of course, when you're a kid, like you don't. You don't really know when you're in pain. Like, you don't have that Mm -hmm. concept yet. You don't have that world experience. And for me, you know, you just are what you are. You feel like crap. But if that's all you've ever known, that's just normal to you. So uh, I remember meeting a specialist when I was about eight. And he was just blown away at the severity of my condition. And... He told me, he said, you got to complain more. <laughs> and uh, I've always never been a complainer. I always just kind of pushed through things and swept them under the rug. And um, I'm still bad at it, but I'm trying to get better. Uh, but yeah, it was it was quite rare. And of course, living in a small community like I do, um, we don't really have the greatest healthcare system it's not very accessible um so it's it's been kind of a battle that way too in canada you know our healthcare is free it's all covered through taxes and things like that but i i mean it's great but at the same time i always say you get what you pay for (laughs) so you know it's so overwhelmed by every single person going in every time they've got a headache or a sore toe or whatever (laughs) it kind of ties up the system quite a bit and of course it's government funded so they're looking at every possible way to cut costs and run on a skeleton things like that so uh that's been a bit of a challenge and uh i mean just last year i had some more serious health problems and i I was able to do an online appointment with a doctor down in Arkansas. And, uh, man, was I blown away. This guy told me more in 15 minutes than I've heard from any doctor in Canada my whole life. So, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. It was, I'd, uh, obviously, if I was a little more financial, well-off, I would love to travel down to the U.S. and see some of these, you know, these doctors that are, uh, that are quite accomplished, right? But is there a uh, second, like a uh, 
a secondary market in in Canada of of doctors that don't accept the um you know whatever the the national health program is that you can go in and pay cash there is some it's starting it's starting to turn a bit more which is good i like to see that i mean if you have the option right like um you know i've had so many health issues that i would take on debt you know to get a little more help because it's uh it affects your quality of life right and if you can live a better life it's good for everybody (laughs) So, um, I would like to see more of it. There isn't much where I am. I'm sure there is down in places like Ontario or you know, around Toronto, that area, but it's so damn far away. <laughs> I, uh, I've been down to the area a few times, uh, go see concerts or whatever, or go visit some friends out east, but I've never done any doctor's appointments, things like that down there, but... It's something I'd like to look more into, for sure. Well, is the 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 hard to con- put weight on? Is that I imagine that I would think your intestines and your uh, that they cut out, you know, goes that's part of the food absor- absorption, I guess. And so I guess you're not absorbing as many uh, nutrients and minerals and things that you had been before. Yeah, that's losing that much of your of your of your intestines. That's right. Yeah, and even even with Crohn's, you know, you get so much scarring in the in the uh, in your intestines and in your GI tract, and that's kind of why Crohn's people are quite frail and healthy. They're not absorbing those nutrients, like you said. They're not getting um, sufficient nutrition into their body. So, I take a lot of supplements as well. Lots of, um, I try to take as pure and organic as I can. Of course, it's a little pricey, but, you know, it it makes a difference. It makes you feel healthier. So, um, yeah, just making sure that I'm staying on top. Sometimes it's such a battle just to stay consistent with even taking vitamins and supplements. Um you know, consistency is a hard thing to maintain, but if you can do it, I think you're gonna you're gonna get to where you want to be, right? So tell me, what, what, tell me about the music. You said you got into music with the photography. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's funny. I was watching your interview with uh, Seth, and man, I didn't yeah. I didn't know he was such a musician. I've seen him around in the community online, and um. Yeah, it's so cool. I I really, really enjoyed what he was talking about, and uh, and you talking about being a deadhead. That was <laughs> that was pretty cool. I I've never become a deadhead, but I've listened to Grateful Dead, and I uh, I love experimental music. You know, I loved uh, I love Frank Zappa, like just that, like just outrageous, right? Just. It's it's made me approach music in uh, a completely different way. I remember Frank. I used to have a Frank Zappa CD, but it was uh, the song I can remember is "Don't Eat the Yellow." <laughs> yeah, I I loved how he didn't take himself so seriously. You know, like he yeah. he could have been writing top forty hits. You know, he had the talent, but he was like, ah, screw that. I'm a Let's have some laughs, right? But he still showed off his talent, so that was. But uh, yeah, anyway, I, I think he, I think he named his kids Floor and Fauna, didn't he? Um, one's name is Moon. Moon, yeah, Zappa. Moon Zappa, and one's name is Dweezil, something like that. Dweezil. Apparently, one. the name Dweezil, his wife Gail, she had a. A kind of a crooked little toe on one of her foot, and he used to call it her dweezil toe. That was the word he came. So they ended up naming <laughs> they named the son dweezil. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, that's a funny story. But yeah, that around uh, it was around age twelve when I couldn't kind of partake in as much physical things like sports and be running around with other kids because I was just so damn sick. Um, I started playing guitar. 
so that was great uh, and uh i really got into music i got into heavy metal right away like metallica right i love metallica and i i would just practice non-stop in my bedroom that's all i could do i had a little cassette player you know and i'd i'd just play the tapes back and forth till they're almost worn out and trying to rock out with these tapes and learn these guitar solos and all oh, that is fun right but um yeah and then in high school i played in a couple bands things like that got a, had a good group of buddies still in contact with them now when we we did some local touring nothing major but we did a few recordings and back then you know there was no streaming services so we put them out on cds and stuff like that but uh yeah some music what was the name of the group <laughs> we were called the damn seagulls <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah it was good we tried to uh it was kind of like 80s glam rock you know you had your 80s hair metal right mm -hmm. so we played songs like that we did some covers of some some canadian metal bands like lover boy and uh things like that so it was a lot of fun um hey did uh who did uh who did tommy lee play for oh wasn't he in uh oh what's i train on the tip of my tongue there but have you seen that uh that show about Tommy and Pam. I, I haven't. I seen the preview on on TV there. Oh <laughs> we man! We watched a few of them. <laughs> Motley Crew, Motley Crew. That's what it was. Motley Crew. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's some. So definitely some eighties hair metal there with those big rock yeah. ballads, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, I just got big into music, and uh, it's funny. Like I, I did a little singing and stuff, and. Just a few years ago, I was working on recording my own solo album. I, would, I never wanted to like become a rock star. That wasn't it. I just love music, and it's a hobby. I do it for myself, and I've done a lot of recordings over the years. And uh, in my mid-20s, I took courses at Berkeley. So cool. What? You can take them online now, right? And it was kind of always, you know, the prestigious music school was Berkeley. So I took some courses online for a couple of years and I learned how to do music production. So got real into it, did lots of recordings of myself. And I was starting to get comfortable with my voice. <laughs> you know, I, you always hate listening to your own voice when you record or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was starting, I was like, you know what, whatever, that's my voice. I just got to use it. And uh, when I was 30 years old, so in April, after I turned 30, um, I got diagnosed with throat cancer. And Damn. and uh, I've had skin. So that's just two years ago. Yeah, huh? just two years ago. Yeah, and I've had a uh, I've had six other surgeries between my ages of 18 to 22. I had six other operations to get rid of my skin cancer. I had all these skin cancer um, things popping up on my body and it runs rampant in both sides of my family. Like my uh, my grandpa passed away when he was 52 from skin cancer and then my mom's had it a couple different times and she had breast cancer and you know, cancer, 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 right? <laughs> so uh, anyway, because of my past history, when I got diagnosed with this throat cancer, the surgeon was like, oh, shit, we got to get you in right away because you've had cancer and it runs, uh, runs so rampant in your genetics. So from the time I got diagnosed to the time I had surgery, it was about three weeks. It was really yeah. quick. And, of course, COVID was popping up and everybody was kind of, you know, what the hell is this COVID? <laughs> So they were in a bit of a hurry to get me through the system. And it turns out it wasn't cancer, but I had I had a tumor that grew um, around my vagus nerve, it's called. So it's a big, important nerve. I had no idea what it was until all this happened. But it runs from your brain all the way to the end of your asshole, <laughs> to put it uh, in layman's terms. 
So it's, it's a big, long nerve, and there's a bunch of small nerves that branch off of that. And it's funny because the vagus nerve action goes through your whole GI tract. And so having this tumor grow on the vagus nerve, I was starting to think, you know, maybe I never had Crohn's disease. Maybe it was this tumor on my vagus nerve that was causing all these weird stomach issues. But anyway, no doctor's been able to confirm that or anything. And, um, so I had this operation, and they took out a good chunk of my vagus nerve. Like, I don't know if you can see my, see my scar here, but it's about a foot-long scar on my neck. And so something that branches off that vagus nerve is the nerves that go to your left vocal cord. And so now I've got a paralyzed left vocal cord, and that's why I sound like an old blues singer or something, or Jake the Snake, or <laughs> whatever, right? Batman, or Darth Vader. I've been, those are names that I've been called before since this, this new voice that I have. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you definitely should, should follow up on some type of, uh, you know, some type of acting, or, uh, uh, radio, voice radio, or, wow. or uh, you know, uh, voiceover cartoons or something. Oh, thank you, you. Know, you definitely have a, dis a distinctive voice. Thank you. I, I said titty bar, DJ, when I first heard it. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know? that's a good one, yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, my favorite is the blues. I, oh, I, I yeah. think I would... Uh, you, you don't have to start singing the blues. You know, I was watching, I couldn't sleep last night. I was watching a, a YouTube deal on Janice Joplin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Listening to her voice and how she died. It was her last 24 hours, and then it went back into her history and stuff. Yeah, and, she, and it was pretty interesting. She's an interesting she had She had a voice. Man. Oh, yeah, yeah. She was in that 27 Club, wasn't she? Uh, 20 oh died at 27 yeah, yeah. with like hendrix yeah. and cobain and all those mm -hmm. oh that'd be an interesting one you should send me uh send me the name of that i love watching uh musical history documentaries of that sort of nature i'll send you i think it's i think it was just janice joplin's last 24 hours okay or something like that i'll look into that because uh, i was just I, I was just checking in janice something popped up janice joplin so i, I got kind of got off on a I'm googling her for a minute, but um, you know, you know what really got me to liking her, uh, the, and it kind of connects to you is um, like the year before, a few, I don't know, six, I don't know, some t period of time before she died, she did this train ride across Canada. Really? And, yeah, and it was all bands, and there's a movie out there. Of it, the Grateful Dead were on there, and I can't even remember. But they had some blues players, but but um, they had a, it was just train ride, and they would ride between the concerts, and they were just partying and throwing down hard, and I and you know I got tickled at her watching this show because how, how how big a um, you know how how big a um, persona and how big a, you know how just. She stuck out in that room of, um, you know, of, of the best music, m musicians of the time. She stuck out personality-wise and, and charisma-wise in front of all of those people, you know, and everybody was was digging her. Oh, yeah. She was just one of those people that could command a room, you know, just had that yeah. unique presence, right? That's really mm -hmm. cool. I'm going to have to look into that, yeah. That's been one of It's called the, the, yeah, the festival... Uh, Express, I think so. Festival is. Express. Let me make a note of that. I think. Let me let me look. Let me Google. Let's see. Let me go over here and Google. Go, well, go ahead and keep talking about your. your I didn't mean to get you off your. No, no, no. Um. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I just threw it into Google. Janis Joplin, Grateful it. Dead, and the band. Yeah, I mean it. It and 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 it was um and they just. I just came across of it. It was like kind of like a Woodstock type deal, but it it was some promoters from New York that put it on, and they, I mean, and they were just buying them liquor, and it, I mean those 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 rock stars, they just, they, I mean it, this because you know whatever 
wherever they played, they had fun, but the, the, all the fun was on the train. Oh, yeah. None yeah. of them slept because they were all playing on the train with each other. And, oh, uh, they, they could party hard, those rock stars, I yeah. tell you. I don't know how they did it, but... <laughs> Yeah, I think it's part of that being a tortured soul as a musician and just, yeah. you know, it's it's tough, right? Everybody's got their demons and everybody finds their coping mechanisms and absolutely. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, back, I was saying, I was just starting to accept my old voice. And it's funny because when I watch any old videos of myself or listen to my old recordings, I hear my old voice, and it was so different than what it is now. And, of course, I could hit a lot of different notes and things like that. So uh, it's been a bit of a challenge to accept this new voice. But people keep telling me how unique it sounds, and uh, it's started to help me accept it a bit more and just get comfortable with it. So thank you for mentioning that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, I, man, I'd love to hear some. Hear you singing some old blues, old Delta blues. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I uh, well, again with you and St- uh, Seth, we're talking about Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff like that. Yeah. Like, oh, I love that. BB King. BB King. I love those those guys. Absolutely incredible musicians. You know, that's what uh, Seth had uh, when I was snooping on his deal. He had a. It was B.B. King, it was John, what got us on it, John Mayer and um, Derek Trucks. And and Derek Trucks just did something that blew B.B. King away, you know. <laughs> and it's, he had some kind of YouTube uh, video on, on his, um, on one of his social media deals. So, but yeah, I need to get more into Derek Trucks. Yeah, I, that's one I have, excuse me, that's one I haven't been uh, too far into, but. You know, there's just so much out there, right? And to, to dive into it. But that's the beauty of, of art and and music. You know, there's so much out there. And every time you, you pick up a new musician or a new band or whatever, it's like it's a whole new different way to looking at things. And you can appreciate what they're doing, right? Well, well, what do you do for a living? You know, it's funny. All this... Uh, <laughs> all these creative things I do and and whatnot I'm I'm an electrician I do uh, I work on ladders wiring things up and you know after, so after this last this throat cancer thing I was on disability for I'm still on disability but I'm back to work now but I was completely off for about eight months and um when I was off there, that's kind of when I got more into uh, computers, like video editing. And uh, that's when I entered the Positively Unstoppable Challenge. I saw I saw Candy online. I saw something, something about her deal on Instagram or something like that. And if, I've been a wrestling fan my whole life, okay? So when I was a kid, I, I was always watching WCW and WWF and... The Attitude Era just sucked me right in. <laughs> and uh, when I, again, when I was about, I, th- I think I was eight years old, right when I was starting to get sick, my uh, my dad took me and my brother and some cousins to uh, like a motorsports spectacular, the monster trucks and dirt bikes, things like that, you know, destruction derby. <laughs> and so we went to the arena and uh, we're down in the pits there, uh, you know, seeing all the monster trucks up close. And one of the drivers was Stone Cold Steve Austin. And another one was Shawn Michaels. And so I got to meet these two guys. And I was I was already a wrestling fan, and I was just blown away. Because I had no idea they were going to be there. And I got their autographs, and that was it for me. Just changed I was through and through. I was a wrestling fan after that. And, of course, you know, being exposed to WCW, stuff like that, I got to know Diamond Dallas Page and loved his persona, loved his, his moves, that diamond cutter he could hit, you know, at any time. And So, yeah, I've been a wrestling fan for a long time. And um, 
when I got into my teen years, I kind of stopped watching wrestling and moved on to music and photography and all those other things. And um, anyway, seeing Candy there on Instagram, I think it might have been an ad from DDPY. And I'd heard about it before, but didn't think much of it. And I was very out of shape. Like, you know, don't don't let anybody tell you if you're skinny, you're in shape. <laughs> That's not true. Like, my body was a wreck, man. I had so much pain all over the place. And I would go out, you know, in our Canadian winters and shovel a little bit of snow. And I wouldn't be able to get out of bed for like a week after. My back would be screwed up. My knees would be screwed up. My shoulders would be screwed up. And then anyway, after this neck surgery, like, shit, I didn't realize how many muscles and nerves are in your neck. And I mean, it should be a no-brainer. Every nerve in your body runs through your neck. <laughs> Goes down to the rest of your body. So after that surgery, I was real screwed up. And uh, I'm still in a lot of pain from it. And I had a lot of limited mobility. So I, I found the DDPY program. And I think it was January 2021. Yeah, it was January 2020. I can't remember the day. But I bought, this, I bought a subscription to the program. Because I was like, well, if I buy it, I'm spending money on it. So I'm going to do it. That was kind of my mm -hmm. my whole thing. So I bought a year of it, and then uh, Candy was running a contest with. It was called the Unstoppable Four. It was those the winners of the previous uh, Positively Unstoppable Challenge. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna throw my name in the hat, see what happens, because I've got all these weird health issues, and I want to try and get back on my feet. So I want to try and be healthier. Instead of just laying here feeling sorry for myself and <laughs> not doing anything about it. And so I entered and I was one of the winners. So I was like, oh man, this is amazing. So Candy called me and we got talking for about an hour and it was just really cool to hear her story. And I was so motivated and she told me about the community and, and all this. So I signed up. I wasn't on Facebook. You know, years ago, I was on Facebook, and I kind of just got sick of all the crap on there that my friends were posting, and I was deleting friends, and I was like, you know what, it would make this faster if I just delete myself. <laughs> so, I, so I did, and and uh, anyways, I signed back up with a brand new account and uh, joined up all this DDPY community stuff, and the stories, man, the stories are freaking amazing. Unbelievable. And that's where I stumbled across you, Vance, and people like Arthur, and you know. But after Candy reached out, and she, man, she pushed me. She, I don't know if she knows it or not, but I would have quit without her for sure. She was sending me messages on Facebook like every few days. Like, How's it going? You know what? What are you doing now? Because I started with the bed flex, okay, and I, I didn't even know if I could do that. It was hard, man. It was hard. I, so so let me ask you this were you did you had you had your neck surgery before starting ddp yes yeah i had it in 2020 and i basically i was on disability i laid in bed watching tv playing video games and doing nothing for about a year and uh man it only takes a couple months for your body to fall apart i didn't realize how bad i was Shit, at, at 57, it just takes a couple of days. I mean, it's crazy. Oh, man. man. Don't tell me that. I don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it was bad. And, uh, but, yeah, doing that contest. So, she, I won, I won a T-shirt and uh, a heart rate monitor. So she sent that out to, oh, and I want a year subs subscription to the DDP app. So now I got a two-year subscription because I bought the one already. I was like, shit, now I'm signed up for two years. <laughs> I was like, oh, now I got to be committed for two years, right? Yeah. So that was, that was good. That was the push I needed. And, um, yeah, she kept me accountable, got me involved in the community. And uh, hearing those stories, man, 
like the weight loss journeys just blew me away blew me away the people were losing hundreds of pounds of weight and i'm like holy crap how is that even possible and you know you hear the story and it's so inspiring and here i am trying to gain weight which is on the opposite side but it's all similar right it's all it's all up here right half of it is just getting committed to your goals and sticking with it no matter what it is you're trying to gain weight you're trying to lose weight you're trying to eat healthier you're trying to exercise whatever you're trying to stop doing drugs you're trying to stop drinking alcohol whatever it is right it's that same principle and and uh, you know going through that the list that ddp made up and all those stories and documentaries he told you to watch and i was just soaking it in man i was watching those every couple days and just just on cloud nine like i was ready to do anything and so that was perfect i I would go right into the program, did it religiously for, you know, that six-month period. And uh, then I started to have a couple injuries and things. I was pushing it a bit too hard. I was trying to do a bit too much. Um, but I submitted my story in for the challenge. And uh, some people from um, DDPY, the company, they reached out. And they were like, man, we love your story. Like, we're blown away. And um, I never really thought much of my story. I just thought everybody's got problems. I'm not special. I'm not unique. You know, everybody's everybody's fighting all the time. And uh, But when I started to write it down, I started to tell people about it. They're like, man, you've been through a lot of shit. Like, <laughs> you've seen a lot of stuff. And you've had a lot of pain. I always joke that I got the body of a 90-year-old. <laughs> it's just, it's so beat up. It's so beat up. I say to my wife all the time, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a wrestler, right? I was so inspired. I was like, shit, I should have just become a wrestler because I'm in so much pain. I got so many injuries. <laughs> and uh, I even joke now. I'm like, you know, DDP became a wrestler when he was 35. I'm only 32. <laughs> I could still do it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty beat up. But I'm doing better than I have in a long time. You know, in my 20s, there was about five years there where I had no health problems. I was doing really good. I was going to the gym. Um, I was healthy. I was, I was in good shape. I felt good mentally, physically. Um, I had started going to therapy. Uh, one of my exes, my ex-girlfriend back in the day, she really encouraged me. I always thought counseling was just a bunch of crap, and you know, there's that stigma around it, right? And it's uh, it's I've started to realize. I look at it like, you know, if I got a sore leg, I go to the doctor, or I go to physiotherapy. So yeah. if I got a if I got a mind that I can go see somebody to get some help too. Why not, right? It's just another, just another tool in the toolbox. And so I encourage people now, even if you don't think you need it, go to a couple counseling sessions. And it just feels good to talk to somebody in a safe space. And you don't have to put wear your heart on your sleeve or anything. It's just a new experience, right? Just yeah, something to try. I like it. Something to try. But uh, anyway, I, as, as, uh, Restrainful as I was, I went and tried it. And I didn't realize how much trauma I had from being a kid, right? Like I was had all that illness and that pain and the, the near-death experiences, things like that. And um, I didn't know how to process it. And even I was on morphine for such a long time that I started to develop a bit of a dependency to it as a kid. And I used to get... Um, you know, the night sweats and the insomnia and uh, I was hallucinating and stuff like that. So that, that kind of, you know, now you're an adult and you look back and you're like, shit, that's not good. Kids shouldn't have to deal with that crap. No. Um, well, that's some good shit, though. That's what killed Janet. Oh, yeah. yeah. I always say if I was a rich man, I'd, I'd probably have morphine coming to my door. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She, uh... Man, I think she had, uh, see, who was recently, 
There was somebody that we looked. Oh, I know who it was. Um, who was the guy that did Omar on The Wire? Oh, and uh, um, and he did um, in Boardwalk Express. He was uh, like like Whitey or something. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember. But anyway, he he overdosed about a year ago, but he was on morphine. I looked him up because a a guy was asking me, my cousin was asking me about him. I said, well, I think he overdosed. And I looked up on Wikipedia, but he had morphine, heroin, and cocaine. Oh, man. I mean, no, no, heroin, cocaine, and fentanyl. Oh, man. I said, shit, man. He, 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 you know, the speedball, he threw... Fitting all fitting all on top of the speed ball. He went out and stopped. That's a, that's a dangerous uh, combination of things for sure. Yeah, shit. But and I I said man I said man he really pushed the envelope and and uh, and and my cousin said push the envelope. Shit, it killed him. Yeah. Well, no <laughs> kidding. Dead as a wedge. No kidding. You know, and that's the thing too. You know, when people are struggling, they're in pain, and they're doing things like that to. Mm-hmm. You know, I've struggled with insomnia my whole life, and after this throat surgery, um, I was waking up every couple hours coughing and choking. My God, my throat is so sensitive now, and uh, that's another thing. After the surgery, I lost about fifty pounds because I was I couldn't eat, and the way my vocal cord is paralyzed, it's kind of stuck in a position where it blocks my airway which blocks my throat, right? So it takes me so freaking long to eat a meal now. Like I'm chewing and chewing and chewing. I got to be really careful when I swallow so I don't choke. And um, anyway. You know, you know, DDP's got some some issue kind of like uh, 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 something with his throat similar to this. Yeah, you know, uh, a, I don't, a few months ago. I don't know exactly. Yeah, I don't know exactly, but he... He had, I know that he's had trouble with his throat too. He had a, yeah, I can't remember exactly what it was, but a few months ago, he called me and I was like, oh shit, DDP's calling me. Like, this is nuts. And, uh, you know, it was great. Like, what a, what a man to reach out, to reach out to people in the community, to take time out of his busy schedule to do that. And how much that means to, to us normal people, right? We're just out here trying the best yeah. that we can. Hey, no, no, yeah, no, wait a minute. Now, I, hey, hey, I know what your job is. DD, uh, DDP Yoga's got to put you on the, let me, you got to start saying bro. <laughs> and, 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 and DDP Yoga's got to put you on the, on the payroll and, and you can start doing DDP's, uh, 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 Community calls, reach out. Community calls. Yeah. You, know, you just got to get the hey, bro. Hey, bro. You know, you got to get the yeah. bro. Yeah, you got to get that. You got to get that Boston. I mean, uh, that uh, Mass. What is it, Mass? New Jersey. You got to get that New Jersey. Uh, um, Bit of a New Jersey. Well, it's funny. I come from a Italian background. Like I'm, I'm a first generation yeah. Canadian, and. Uh, I've always loved those those Jersey guys in New York and you know all those mafia stories and stuff like that. It's just yeah. it's just funny, but those accents. Oh, hey, hey, hey! That reminds me of another deal. Uh, shit, I can't remember. I think it was. Uh, I don't remember. I think it's on Netflix, but it. It was. It's a damn uh, documentary, and it's one of those sports documentaries where they do different, you know, sports stories. But there's it was a minor league. Oh yeah, game. I watched this. I watched this. You, you watched yeah. that one, yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and the mob guy that that worked, they said it. You know, he, they claim Sopranos. Is yeah, right. I heard he, that. He owns a sanitation, but he bought his down. High school son, a minor league hockey yeah, team. The, that guy just who they, the Galante family. That's what it was. Yeah. Oh, that was <laughs> what a story! What a story! You know. Oh man, that that's a great show. I just I just yeah, love that, hearing the stories like that. It's just wild what goes on in the world. And hey, and all those you know they brought in all those damn uh, um, enforcers, you know. And, <laughs> And, and everybody, yeah, and everybody just loved him. The fans, everybody, and even the guy that ran the league, 
uh, that hated him the whole time. By the end, he's really locked yeah. up too because what they did for his that's league, right. He even got on board. Yeah, the commissioner know? there. He was. Yeah. He was so against it. Yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big sports fan. I love sports. Uh, obviously, being Canadian, it's kind of you're born and bred into hockey. So, um, I love the Chicago Blackhawks. Big, a big Chicago fan. Um, I've seen, you know, I've watched quite a few other uh, interviews, and you always end up talking about a bit of sports. So, uh, that's yeah. It's it's a cool world. It's a cool world. It's a fun fun thing to be involved in and to be a fan of but uh but yeah man so so uh so candy story got you in yeah and and you entered into the competition last yes, year. yes last year yeah and you did the uh that you weren't one of the finalists but no. evidently your story i tell you your story was uh, impactful enough to have them reach out to you and yeah steve you you were one of the first names that steve you mentioned to me as as a potential interviewee see that's that's wild because i uh obviously getting into ddpy i look up to steve you and i found out he was a photographer and you know kind of heard some of his backing story so I really look up to the guy, and I had no idea he even knew who I was until, until you mentioned it there when we were chatting on Facebook. And I, I went to my wife, and I said, holy shit, Steve, you knows who I am. <laughs> you know? Oh, no, yeah, you're on his radar. Oh, that's, he said, you, you need to you know, I said, he, he said, interview Rock. That's so cool. I, he didn't even tell me your last name. He said, just said, interview Rock. Oh, that's so cool. And he didn't tell me anything about it. Well, I mean, hopefully you got the right guy. It could have been another rocker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, surely I did. Hell, yeah. That's a great story. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, that's that's so cool when uh, you kind of get recognized a bit. And it just gives you that extra push, right? It's like uh, mm -hmm. you feel like people believe in you because – it's, it's, it's always hard, again, with consistency. It's hard to believe in yourself all the time. So to, mm -hmm. to hear other people who you look up to and you're inspired by, it just goes back and forth, right? It's like a little seesaw. It's like, okay, you know, mm -hmm. they believe in me, so I should believe in me. And that's, it just works in a little cycle. And, you know, and... and Honestly, Steve Hughes about the nicest, one of the nicest guys I've ever Aww. met. And he's, and he's, and he's really like the wizard, uh, you know, behind the curtain. Um, he's the president of the company. That's and, wild. Um, yeah, and he's, uh, you know, Dallas's partner. But uh, Dallas is the is the face and the driving force and the compassion and, the, um, you know, it's Dallas's company. Dallas is is everything, but. Steve Hughes, the man behind the scene making it all happen. He's the one pulling the strings behind the scene. Well, I'll have to – hopefully I can get to know him better over over the coming uh, – mm -hmm. or the future here coming up. But I heard I heard you talking about Steve a bit. Something I didn't know was um, mm -hmm. him and his wife did that exercise competition, and that's kind of how he he got into it. And then he ended up connecting with Dallas at the airport – and he was yeah. he was the you know he was into videos and and stuff like that so they kind of brought their brains yeah. together and created DDPY. Yeah, and he um, he the Body for Life I think is the name of the company, but it, it's like uh, e it's like three letters, but it was a um, a twelve week competition that he and his wife entered, and both of them got he showed me pictures. Both of them just got ripped, nice. and uh, uh, but his wife won the the woman's uh, side. Oh, good for her! And uh, and you know, and they, I don't know. It was it was a significant amount of cash, and um, um, <clears throat> but then they, but he was a you know he he's Ivy League educated. He he comes from I don't know Columbia or something. Oh wow! Super smart guy. Wow. Yeah, so, and he's and he's a. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe, I don't think it's Princeton, but it's one of the Ivy League schools. But he um, um, <clears throat> was in, you know, he was doing 
working on a video, and they start a, a, a movie, a documentary about you know where in, where inspiration comes and what's you know what's the final what really what's the what's the flip that switches that you know it's kind of like the camel that the straw that broke the camel's back that really gets you going you know and and he's he's never finished it uh but he's he's all into the inspiration side of it and he's the driving force behind the the stories and like um uh, you know they got some graphic artists like uh, I think his name uh, D- Dylan um, Fryam Frymeyer. Shit, I don't. I'm screwing up his last name, but Dylan Dylan did my did, did a lot of work on my video okay. and Steve and then Dallas. But um, but they're the ones that are the storytellers, you know. So, that's, yeah, that's what made it. And you know, and, and Dallas was just s- selling DVDs. When he ran into Steve, right, and then that, and then they, and just at an airport they met, and then that's how they collaborate. They started, they formed, you know, they formed a partnership, and and it's become what it's become now. Just a just a chance meeting at the airport, and yeah, and uh, yeah, I know, I know. Once they did the Shark Tank uh, spiel, that kind of propelled mm-hmm. them, and um, well, it's funny too, when I was. Uh, I've always been the type of person that I, again, I think it's completely related, related to my health problems, but I've always felt like I've been running out of time and uh, kind of never knowing when my time could be up. And so I've always pushed myself harder than I should, which makes myself sicker. <laughs> so I was always bad at, you know, uh, working for 12 hours nonstop, and of course you you don't eat good, you don't sleep, and uh, you're not doing all the normal things you should be doing to have a well balanced lifestyle. And um, but in a way, I mean, I've learned a lot of things, and I've got to do a lot of different courses and educational programs, and and uh, like everything in life, just interests me, man. It's just the whole thing. I'm just so curious about everything. And, you know, I learned a little bit of this and opens up another door. And you go down that door and that door. It's just the endless rabbit hole, right? And uh, so when I was off disabled there, I was getting into some video editing. And um, I started playing video games. I hadn't played video games since I was a kid. I was never big into them. But they really started to inspire me. I was like, shit, I want to learn how to make video games. <laughs> I want to tell stories uh, through, you know, because in video games you can do anything. It's fantasy world. You can you can tell any story you want. It doesn't have to make sense. You can break the laws of physics and it doesn't matter. So I started getting to that and doing some app development and things like that on the computer, learning programming languages and so the past year, I've just been into it. I'm starting to get pretty decent at it. And uh, I mean, it's still much, it's, it's an endless amount you can learn. But, oh, man, has that ever been another motivator for me? And uh, I think that's something you got to reward yourself with something, right? No matter what you're trying to do on your journey with your health, like you got to have a reward that's not something negative, Instead of going out and getting a cake or going out and buying a case of beer or whatever, you got to have something positive. And for me, it's kind of like allowing myself time to learn things or take my courses online or play around in this little fantasy world and just get lost in it. And it's something that completely removes me from... Every, you know that daily cycle, that grind that that often wears us down. So it's uh, luckily my wife doesn't think I'm crazy, and she lets me go play on the computer. You know, and uh, she understands that I need that time. So I kind of have a few days a week where that's my reward for 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 fighting through everything else. It's like okay, this is what I can look forward to. So I think. I think that's something that I've learned, and I think it'll help a lot of other people 
if you can kind of no, I mean, I, set up those positive Yeah, I think parts. that's, that's a, a great a – two, there's two or three things I'd like to unpack a little there. Uh, one is the reward. Um, you know, for people like me struggling with weight, if we were – like you said, if we were reward ourselves with food or alcohol, you know, shit I used to drink every day and or anything else, um, you know, it's just, it's two steps, you know, one step forward, two steps yeah. back, you know, and so, so we've got to, like you, like you talk about, we got to find a, a positive, something that we still feel like is a reward for the hard work that we're doing and the break from the grind. Um, the, um, the second thing you said, you, you, uh, talked about, um, going into the video games, you know, I, um, I got, uh, this was back when I was drinking and I was a solo practice and I, uh, you know, I just come home from work. I get drunk every night and I was playing world of war. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that damn game sucked two or three years out of my yeah. life. I don't even know where they went. You yeah. know I mean? I just come home, put on headphones and and uh, uh, pour me a, a big dicky, you know, one of these big cups. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd start my first of three of bourbon and coke. Big, big or, tall uh, boy, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, first of three or four of them, and, and I'd just play. You know, my wife would be back around, you know, hollering at me, trying to get me to do something, yeah. and the kids would be climbing on me, but it was just an escape from reality, yeah. you know. And... and um, I mean, that's how I survived those days, but I, it damn sure I don't know if it was a positive. <laughs> I don't know if mine was a positive um, effect on my life at that moment in time. Well, I, I think so, because you're still here with us, right? Yes, that's right. Hey, that, that's it was right. just another step in the big picture. That's right. I like that. I like that. Now, um, you talk about when you were pushing yourself so hard that you uh you know would do damage uh and and you know have setbacks physically and things and um i would like for you to talk more about that because i've i've done that in my journey um you get to feeling good you push yourself harder and harder and then you have an injury and it just uh, demoralizes you and crushes you, you know, and depresses you, and and um, you know it's. But it's just a part of the journey, like you talk yeah. about. It's just these things are going to happen. Uh, you know, uh, your dog's going to get run over. Yeah. Your, your wife's going to, you know, uh, be mad at you. You mean think uh, you know people are going to pass away. I mean things in your life are going to fall apart. Uh, on top of your injuries, you know, and, and these are setbacks that you've got to understand are just part of the journey. And, I, and I'd like to hear more about your injuries uh, and setbacks and, and how you got through them and that kind of thing. Absolutely. Okay. I'd be happy to try and walk you through some of my zany logic. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, I always think, uh, something I always tell myself when I'm down, I'm kind of perpetuating that cycle you're going through an injury or whatever you're in a bad state of mind um is life is progressive no matter what like it's going to go on with or without you the days are going to keep rolling forward the clock's going to keep going you know the calendar doesn't stop it's not going to stop for you it's not going to stop for anybody and like you say, things happen. Your dog might get run over. Your wife's mad at you. You know, and that's part of the journey. And it's not that you shouldn't ever feel upset or you shouldn't ever uh, take a week to feel like shit, you know, or kind of fall off, the, uh, fall off the horse for a while. That's fine. That's fine. That's life, man. Like you, it happens to everybody. You know, you see... Uh, it's tough because on the internet, you always see, uh, you know, these influencers or whatever, you know, big CEOs of companies. And it's like, how the hell do they have their life so put together? 
but it's just what you see, right? I always say yeah. everybody's got to eat, everybody's got to shit, everybody has to shower, you know? And uh, when you put it into perspective, we're all human. And everybody's got yeah. the human emotion. I don't care how strong you are, how hard you train, how good your diet is, whatever. You're going to fall off the horse and you're going to be down in the dumps. But you just got to remember to get back on the horse. And you have to remember that even the negative steps are positive steps. Any step is a, is a, is a step forward. Like I said, life is progressive whether we like it or not. So if you can remind yourself of that, you know, I'm not saying spring up out of bed and start doing bench presses. Like, <laughs> just just mm -hmm. allow yourself to feel like crap, but know that you got to draw the line at some point and you got to get back on the horse. Um, like I said just a few months ago, man, I was so depressed. I was so down in the dumps. I was so run down. I wasn't sleeping. When you don't sleep, you don't feel good mentally, physically, right? When you don't sleep, everything spirals out of control. Your health starts to take a hit. And, uh, you know, I think back to when I was younger and I was giving her all the time. Because uh, when I wasn't sick after my operation, I was feeling good for the first time in my life. And um, I, was, I was burning the candle at both ends. I was playing sports again. I was going to university. I was, I was partying. I was partying hard. I was drinking every day, like you said, you know. And uh, of course, that was a coping mechanism too, kind of masking all that pain and that trauma. And you just bury it, and you bury it, and then that manifests through abusive things like eating or, or drinking or whatever. I mean, even over-exercising is bad for you, right? Anything you overdo is bad for you. Just because it's mm -hmm. supposedly a good thing, it you know, if you overdo it, you're overdoing it. That's plain and simple. So I was, mm -hmm. I was overdoing it, and um, I got... Uh, I got injured playing hockey, got a bad concussion, hurt my shoulder, and then of course I was I became a, a self-loathing person. Couldn't play sports, you know, couldn't do anything, and and you just start to hate yourself a bit, and you're like, oh, I was so stupid for doing that, and uh, I shouldn't have done that, and if I wouldn't have done this, you know, I could have done that, and all these what ifs, what if, what if, and it's it's like it's not about the what ifs or the past. All you have is the seconds that are ticking by. And if in that moment you decide, okay, what am I going to do about it? What can I do about it? It's not so much what am I going to do, but what can I do about it? And it's just baby steps, right? You don't need, like I said, you don't need to jump out of bed and start doing deadlifts and bench presses. Stay in bed. Do DDPY. Do the bed flex. That's how I started. And it got me into the chair. I was in the chair and I felt like an idiot. I was like, why am I doing this? Like, I know I can do more. But if I do more, I know I'm going to hurt myself. So I sat my ass in that chair for three months. And it sucked. I hated it. And even when I was getting stronger and I was getting more flexible and I was starting to feel better. You always want to push harder. You always want to push yourself, push yourself. But then I know if I get injured... It all goes down the drain again. And I'm lying back in bed, playing video games, eating like garbage, not feeling good about myself, not being a good husband, not being a good father, not being a good friend. So the better I... It's just those two extremes, right? You're either overdoing it or you're underdoing it. So the hardest thing is getting that consistent balance walk the line right and if you can somehow do that and realize that you're gonna swing the pendulum's gonna go back and forth you're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna dip into those extremes you know life's like a little roller coaster like this and the moments that are are beautiful are the ones where you're riding on the straight and narrow when you when you have a good routine and and you're feeling good mentally, you're feeling good physically, you're making good choices, and you're being being the best version of yourself. 
And uh, so I think just being conscious, just be conscious yeah. of, uh, of what you're experiencing. Almost look at yourself out of your body, right? Just kind of take a step back and, and remember that even if you're injured or you're going through a tough time, like I saw your video yesterday, you bought all those jars of peanut butter and you were throwing them out. <laughs> and it's like... I can't have them so much in my house. <laughs> you know, it was a weak moment for you. You thought you needed the peanut butter. It was a good deal. You love the peanut yeah. butter, right? But then you got home and you're like, shit. If I do this, I'm going to set myself back. So you had that moment of clarity, right? And you threw it out. And all the power to you, man. That's a tough thing to do. Yeah, I hate to throw out food, man. I hey, hate you know, it's it's like if you would have packed it up in the car and was like, I'm going to take this somewhere and donate it, you would have had second, uh, second thoughts, you know. Yeah. You would have been like, ah, maybe I'll just keep one jar, you know. <laughs> yeah. But you did right. You, you did an extreme, right? You just threw it out. And that's, it's a hard thing to do and it's a hard change to make, but I think that's a good step. So, I don't know, that's... Have you ever studied uh, any Buddhism? Some of your, some of your philosophies are, you know, yeah. are, are, are kind of along the lines of like a Buddhist thought. You know? I, uh, I've kind of heard bits and pieces about it. It's something I'd like to get more into. Because um, I think if you have that spiritual component, of your journey, mm -hmm. like we're all on a journey. Life's the journey. Mm -hmm. There's all the different chapters we're going through. Some are good, some are bad, <laughs> but we're going through it. So, I uh, that's something I want to incorporate into my my life is a little more of that spiritual element. I was raised Roman Catholic. Um, that was a bit too much for me to understand when I was a kid. It was. Uh, it was always like the fear of God was in you, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, now that I get older, Catholic guilt. That's right. right. Catholic guilt. That's right. Yeah, it's some of the things. Yeah, but you, I just, yeah, but see, you know, you know, one of the uh, the great things I think about the, the uh, Catholic religion is you can go into that confessional, confess your sins, and the and the priest can absolve you of your sins at that time, at that moment. And so you walk out as long as you do, you know, whatever your penance was, Hail Marys and, uh, you know, whatever your penance is, as long as you do it, you know that that, that sin's gone. You don't have to worry That's about right. it anymore. I always thought that was a good, uh, That's right. a good, uh, a good pony, you know, a good uh, part of the faith, you know, knowing that you're, that one's done. Well, yeah. You don't have to worry about that one anymore. Yeah. Uh, I think it's good, but I think some people abuse it, right? You think I, <laughs> again, use it as a crutch to be a bad person, and it's like, well, yeah. I'll be absolved of everything. You know, I can get away with murder. The, the priest will forgive yeah. me, right? <laughs> but, I always wondered, you know, what the priests are in there and think, listening to all that stuff about people. You know, they got to hear the worst of all the people. That's right. That's right. Yeah, they, I'm sure they'd have some interesting stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. that's a good. I'm glad you mentioned that. Because, um, yeah, I think the spiritual side, it can be helpful too. And uh, that's the thing is you got to, <clears throat> it's not one thing that's going to, set you on the right path you got to look at at lots of different things we've got all these tools and resources um, especially now more than ever with the internet right we're so connected you don't understand something you can hop on youtube and wikipedia and learn about it in 15 minutes you don't get a get a quick understanding of it so use it use all the tools that you have at your disposal um so that's that's another thing. You should never count yourself completely down and out, because there's always you can always reach out. There's always the community. There's the DDPY community. Um, if yeah. if you can't get a hold of a friend or a family member, somebody to kick you in the butt or somebody to inspire you, you can always find somebody online, and 
uh, tell them how to get into the DDP. You know, act like it. We're talking to someone who doesn't know anything about DDP yoga. All right. How, how to get into the community? All right. Well, yeah. if you're new to DDP, why? Um, <clears throat> you're gonna want to get onto Facebook. If you don't have Facebook, you gotta sign up for Facebook. I was a little reluctant to get back on there uh, at first, but I'm glad I did. Anyway, get on there. There's a group. It's called DDPY. I think it's DDPY Yoga. DDP Yoga. DDP, all okay, one DDP word. Yoga, all one word. And uh, join up there. It's like 70,000 plus people sharing their st stories and their journey, and it will inspire you. There's something out there for everybody. Um, and also, you know, Google DDPY, get the app. I know the DVDs are great, but if, you, uh, if you're if you subscribed to something, I think you're going to be a little more um, attached to it. You're going you're gonna to get more involved in the program if you know you're paying monthly for it, right? So, And the app's great. There's so much on there. There's so much. It's almost overwhelming, the amount of information that you can find on the app. Um, and do it and reach out make yourself accountable I started to realize I wasn't documenting a lot of my journey and I wasn't getting involved I wasn't sharing my story online and I've started to realize that's a big part of it too because once you put yourself out there you kind of have to be accountable to yourself a little bit more and you start to uh, make a couple of connections and friends in the community and people are concerned about you. If they don't hear about you, yeah. they're going to reach out. And so that's that's been good. I actually, I got my mom doing DDPY now. No, we're well, good for her. And good it's her. it's been great. It's been so great. She uh, she struggled with a ton of health issues, and she's quite overweight. Um, and uh, her nutrition hasn't been good for a long time. So it's been uh, it's been quite emotional for me to see her getting involved in it. And when I found out I was going to be a parent, I kind of threatened her. You know, I said, well, you're not going to be able to crawl around on the floor and play with your grandson. <laughs> and she was like, shit, like you got me there. You know, you called me out. Yeah. And so she uh, she started with the DVDs, I think, and... She did 100 days in a row to start off with. Wow. That's tough to do it every day. Oh, it was tough. It was tough, and she was hurting. And, uh, but then she started to feel good, started to – her joints were feeling better, and uh, her arthritis was getting a bit better. And just a couple of weeks ago, she hurt her toes doing a workout. I think she was doing Energy 2.0 or something like that. She hurt her toes, and of course she goes off to the doctor right away, and they diagnose her with some new thing. I know she's all wrapped up on that. She said, well, you know, I've got whatever wrong with my toes, so I can't do yoga. And I was kind of like, you know what, forget about the diagnosis. Like, yeah, it hurts, but don't stop it. Do what you can. Get in the chair. Do the bed stuff. Yeah, do the chair. Yeah. Like there's always an alternative. You don't need your toe for the chair or your exercise. That's you right. Can. You don't need your toe for the bed flip. That's right. And there's still hard workouts, right? If you engage properly, yeah. you'll get your heart rate up, man. You'll be sweating. I know I was. I was sweating in the chair. I didn't know I could sweat so much <laughs> sitting in a chair and moving my arms around. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what what are you what exercises uh, what are you doing now what what have you worked up? I'm I'm doing intermediate, okay. And again, this is my third time through on intermediate. I'm just not. I'm. I probably could move on, but again, I don't want to hurt myself. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to push it too far. The fat burner kicks the crap out of me. Energy's pretty good. I can get through energy, and feel good after. But I mean, fat burner. Like, I, I got to be careful when I do it so I don't, I've got a hernia in my core. So if I do push my core too much, that flares up and then I neglect working out. 
you got a hernia where? Uh, it's it's right beside my belly button. So I think when I had my big uh, intestinal resection, the uh, the muscles and stuff there, once they got cut, they were so damn weak, right? So yeah. I think that hernia popped through, and it's been there for a while. And uh, I don't want any more surgeries. I've had, I've had nine major surgeries now, and I don't. Surgery, you know, it's it's just like medication. You go in for surgery and you come out with ten new problems. <laughs> yeah, sure. So if you if you can try and rehab yourself through exercise and nutrition before you consider your surgery. And I know it's scary when a doctor tells you the list of things that are wrong with you and that you need medication or surgery to fix you. You know, of course, don't don't neglect it, but Explore all the options first. Don't uh, don't get blinded by the medical terminology and don't, because if you do, then you think of yourself as a sick person, and that was a part of my problem. Was I always, oh, I can't do this because I'm sick, right? I can't uh, I can't go out and do photography because I'm sick. You know, I can't I can't play in a band because I'm sick. I always think of that. You think of yourself as a sick person, and you become sick. You, you are what you eat, and you are what you think. <laughs> yeah, so it's absolutely. Uh, you got to keep that that mentality. You know the um, uh, you talked about the two th two on the raise up two things. You talked about the wave, and I I saw something on YouTube one time talking about dieting and and the wave. You know you're going to be going through these peaks and valleys like you're talking about. And and the goal is when you're on that peak is try to just stay as consistent as you can, like you talk about, and try to ride that wave and as long as you can because it's going to die out and you're going to flip back down into that valley yeah. and then you got to do whatever you got to do to get through that damn valley to get back up on that peak and try to ride it again. That's you right. Know, it's a, yeah. It's a never-ending process. It's like, a, like, sur like surfing, <laughs> you know, you just... Waiting on those waves to come catch you, and, and and then you hold on and hope it lasts for a long time. That's right, and you never know. You never know when you're going to come crashing down again. No, you know, you never know when that somebody's is going to drop you. That's right, and it can happen a split second. It's just a miracle we wake yeah. up every morning, you know. Yeah. And uh, all the all those hazards, I always say, you know, you can slip and fall going up the stairs and seriously injure yourself. So it's just. You're just so lucky to make it through every day and not have anything catastrophic happen that's going to set you back. You know, the, the two other things you talked about I think is important. Is I was listening to this uh, audio book I got off Audible talking about how to become a life coach because I, I started my deal, Transform with Vance, to try to help people. But um, Two of the things that they really talk about is to have a learner's mind, to be open. You know, don't the older we get, that we become more closed-minded right. and and think we know uh, things. And so you just, I mean, you you talked about it beautifully. You, you look at life like um, you know every day is a blessing, or grateful, and what can I learn today from my teacher? You know, you can learn something from everybody from everywhere. You can. Don't ever give up that 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 beginner's learner's mind. <laughs> That's right. And the other thing was was to stay positive. What you touched on is to, you know, you really want you don't want to look at yourself. You don't want to look at your faults. You want to look at your potential and you know and and do affirmations or meditations. But you want to, um, you know, every one of us is beautiful. People are just people. You know. <coughs> And there's there's going to be good and bad in all of us, but uh, we have to really focus on the good. I think the Buddha said that you know everybody has ten thousand joys and ten thousand sufferings. <laughs> it's just a matter of how we react to each one. You that's know? right. That's right. And so well, just yeah, you know you got to think if you wouldn't have got up so heavy and gained all that weight and went through all those hard times. Maybe you never would have found DDPY. Maybe you would have never started uh, focusing on nutrition, right? So without that, you can't think 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, well, I just would have been better off if I wouldn't have put on the weight. Or I would have been better off yeah. if I wasn't sick. It's like, no, you, you, you wouldn't have had the experience, right? So, you know, you wouldn't know how beautiful life could be. If you didn't go through the suffering, how do you see the light, right? You got to go through the darkness to see the light. If you just, it's not, life's not all rainbows and sunshine, right? <laughs> you would never appreciate anything if it was, because you would never know any difference. So, yeah, it's the two, the two sides of the coin, right? The two sides of the spectrum. The yin and the yang. The yin and the yang. Yeah, see, I want to know more about that. That's... You got me curious about this Buddhist stuff now. <laughs> Buddhist or the Tao, or, you know, yeah. uh, the Buddhist uh, I'm really interested in. I, some of the stuff I have trouble with, but a lot of the stuff is, I think is incredible. Um, but the, some of the Buddhist faith I think is incredible. Why you I mean, I think, you know, some of all faiths are, faiths are incredible. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, There's a little bit of something in all of them that I think are yes. are interesting. You know, I don't, I don't care if you're atheist or if you're full-on christian or whatever like um just do some exploring open your mind up there's some there's yeah. something good in everything right even the bad stuff there's something good there That's right. um and i i loved when you said as you get older you know you start to get a little bit of tunnel vision you get you get set in your ways and you get a narrow mind and i've noticed that i mean i know i'm still relatively young but um I catch myself all the time. It's like, man, you can't think that. Like, you don't uh, don't limit yourself, right? Don't just because I would do something the way I do doesn't mean the way somebody else is doing it is wrong. Yeah, like, right. if they're doing something that I would consider wrong, it's like, well, maybe that's what works for them. So maybe I should try and understand why they're doing it the way they are, and it might. It might open up a new door for me, right? I could become a better person if I'm not scared to expand my horizons a little bit. So mm -hmm. that's what worked for me. I mean, of course, that's not true in every situation. And you got to have hard lines, too. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, but life's, life's a big... It's a big, enjoyable experience if you want it to be. And there's an endless amount of things to learn. And, uh, we only get one shot at it, so we got to make the best of it. That's right. You know? That's right. When you said um, you do the audiobooks, I love audiobooks. Like, if you can't find the time. I like reading, too. I try and do it before bed. It helps calm me down, take my mind off things. Um, mm -hmm. And it helps with my insomnia a bit. Instead of popping a sleeping pill, I try and read until my eyes get tired. So, so you're still having the insomnia? Oh yeah, yeah, big time. I, I it was. Uh, I said I was a good candidate to become a parent because uh, having a newborn, you're up all the time, anyways. So, I said, "Geez, we should have had twins. Yeah. <laughs> Bring on more work yeah. for me." But, uh, so, so do they know what causes the insomnia? They, they think it's because I have a lot of chronic pain, so my body's in a lot of stress. And I always I always equated stress to being a mental thing. Like, you know, you think you're stressed out, and you, so you got a lot on your plate, right? You're, you're working too hard, or you're trying to accomplish too much, or you've had uh, trauma or something bad happened, you're stressed out. But I never really considered physical stress. So if your body actually has like swelling you know or inflammation in it you're putting physical stress on yourself and of course you know your body's located inside of your mind or your mind's located inside your body it's all connected i think a lot of people look at the mind as something separate and i try not to i think of it just it's another organ in your body and uh you got to keep the whole thing healthy right so if you've got swollen ankles you got inflammation you got stress it's going to cause stress in your mind subconsciously without you even knowing about it because all your nerves are working at a lower capacity right and your muscles aren't functioning as well as they could be and i think those are just sending responses back to your brain so it's all it's all connected 
So that was, I just started to realize that, you know, the physical stress and the pain on your body is causing mental stress too. Does the DDPY help with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, the workouts are, are so low impact that it just helps to get that, uh, mm. that blood flow up better and reduce that inflammation and just make you a lot more conscious about the movements. You know, when Dallas tells you like, you know, grip your toes, grip your, you know, flex your quads, flex your calves, all that stuff. It's, it's not stuff you normally think about in your day-to-day -day life. You don't think about engaging all these different muscle groups. And um, the more you can do that, I think, the more in tune you get with your body. You start to uh, listen to your body in a, in a better way and you start to um, just get more acquainted with yourself. So I think the better you can get to know yourself, I always say, <laughs> one thing I always say to people is, yeah, life's hard, but it's, it's, it's already uh, hard enough to just control yourself. Like it's, it's, it's a full time, it's a double full time job. It's around the clock, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just trying to figure yourself out. So cut yourself some slack, man. You don't have to be the CEO of a company to be successful. Like just, yeah. you can be successful by taking care of yourself, right? And other things will come. If you take care of yourself, other opportunities will, will come. Um, and you doing the, the, uh, the mentorship, uh, the life coaching, like that's, it's huge because you're going to win while you're helping other people win. Because again, it's that student and teacher aspect and you can be a student because you hear other people's issues and, uh, you look at it through their, their eyes and it's going to make you a better person because you're opening yourself up to new experiences. So again, that's just be like a child, right? Everything's new and exciting. It's, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, be innocent, right? Don't, don't uh, hold things in your heart that make you upset. And I always say to my wife, I've got this shelf of rage inside me and that, uh, you know, somewhere inside me, I can be a very angry, mean person. And um, a lot of times I feel like I'm wearing a mask around. Like I go out to work and I go to therapy and stuff and I'm always this happy-go-lucky guy. But that's not me, you know. That's not the whole me. There's a lot of different parts of me. And uh, so I've actually been trying, to, like, I've been trying to get better at letting some of that out. Like if I'm pissed off and mad, try and get it out in the moment instead of yeah. burying it and burying it. And then you have the big blow up down the road, right? That's what that's what I do. I I I just I bury it and then I become a contrarian. You know, I'm passive aggressive. Well, me too. Yeah, <laughs> I become hard to deal with, man. <laughs> yeah, and and then it's then, uh, pe it's people you love that end end up getting the short end of the stick, yeah. and right. and they don't deserve it, right? You know. <laughs> yeah. So it's you got to find ways to deal with that too, and I've been trying to get better at that. And again, you're never going to master any of these things. Um, you know what? I, you know what? I was thinking of it. I, I don't even know what Avenger movie it was, but Ben Danner, you know, the Hulk, he said, I'll tell you a secret. He said, I'm always angry. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's good. I can't remember which movie it was. Yeah, you know, they were worried if he, that the Hulk was going to be able to come out. That's you know, right. He, was, he leaned over and said, he, uh, he said, he said, I'll tell you a secret. I'm, I'm always, always angry. angry. <laughs> uh, I know, I know you're a bit of a stand-up uh, comedy fan. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I think it was Bill Burr who watched one of his comedies. I love, I love yeah, Bill Burr. Yeah, he's hilarious. And he talked about having that shelf, excuse me, that shelf of rage. <laughs> and it just keeps stacking up, you know, and it's stacking up, yeah. and he's just, oh, he's, he's getting mad, and he's restraining himself, right? And so that's, uh, 
it's something to be aware of and um i try to hey, hey i got it sorry go ahead i gotta ask you because I, I don't know you said you played hockey yes the one thing i think you know i love i love the contact yeah uh you know because i played football growing okay up, but um but uh my favorite thing about hockey is the way they substitute. <laughs> they jump over the boards like a bunch of maniacs. You yeah, know? explain explain to me how they do. I mean, they, they don't even stop the game. Oh, they just jump in and out. How does I always love that too. You know, I played I played a lot of sports growing up, and I got good at quite a few. I played football, not very long, yeah. but uh, I played baseball. I played hockey. I played soccer, and um, mm -hmm. nothing. There's nothing like hockey. There's nothing like hockey. Like you're skating, first of all, on ice. It's uh, it's so cold, but you're sweating your ass off. You know, it's just it's all these uh, contradictions <laughs> combined into one sport. But uh, yeah, in soccer, we would play. I played indoor soccer. I loved indoor soccer because it was like hockey. That's fast pace. It was like hockey. You can use the boards to to dump the ball, right? And you can yeah. pass to people and bounce off the ball of the walls. I love that. And uh, so, anyways, there was uh, there was the the booths, right, where you would sit. The teams would sit on the on the stands. And a lot of times, we jump over the the boards in, in in indoor soccer as well to do substitutes. Or if somebody got injured, you know, you jump out, run, and try and get back into the game as quickly as possible. And that guy can oh, get. You could do it. You could do it without the, the you know, in regular soccer, they, they got to stop the play. Yeah, and yeah. The ref lets them in. So it's not that way for indoor. No, they can come no. in. And, uh, Indoor's like a whole different game, and I loved it. Yeah. I played outdoor soccer. I hated it. I was like, man, there's whistles all the time, and yeah. I can't watch. Everybody's faking in. That's right. Everybody that's wants right. A yeah. Free kick. Yes. Everybody wants that. Yeah, some guy's pretending some guy pushed him, and he fell down. He's got a broken arm now, yeah. you know. Yeah, and they carry him off on a stretcher, and then he comes right back. That's in. right. That's right. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't watch soccer on TV. I hate watching it. I'm not a fan of it, but I, I love playing it. But uh, I, I like the World Cup, though. I get into the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, it's pretty like competitive. It's pretty competitive. I like that. Hey, I'll tell you something funny. Um, my daughter was playing volleyball back in the day. She's in mid twenties now, and this was like a. 13, 14 year old group, 50, I don't know. But they made some big tournament in Reno. And so I went out there and um, and it was during the World Cup. And the U.S. was in the World Cup. And, you know, I considered it a, um, you, you know, it was a sign. How, how many times would I ever get an opportunity to bet on World Cup soccer? <laughs> so during that, like, you know, four day, whatever, long four or five day tournament. I bet on every soccer game that I could watch. And, you know, and and those and, and you know, it's like uh, uh, football. You know, you bet if you bet for the favorite, you pay more to win a hundred dollars. If you bet for the underdog, you bet a hundred dollars to win more than a hundred. That's right. You know, it's you, you just you pick a team yeah. and you and and then you pay the whatever the line is, the, 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 the number line, dollar line. And um, so it's really a 50-50 bet except for the numbers. And so I think I bet 13 times, and I want you to know, I went 0 and 13. Oh. I can tell you that I am not, uh, you know, I, 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 it definitely showed me I have no knowledge of soccer or at least how to bet on it. Who's going to win? It didn't, even, even, you know, I got so mad I bet on the team I didn't, I didn't want to bet on and I'd still lose. You know? yeah. <laughs> so soccer is always, there's hardly any blowouts in soccer, right? Like it's yeah. never, it's never a seven to zero game. It's, it's always so tight, right? Um, I guess that's what makes it interesting, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. Like with football and hockey or baseball, a team can come and just stomp the other guys, right? It's, it could be 10 to 10 to zero in hockey or, you know, 10 to zero in baseball, whatever, 50 to zero in football. <laughs> 
<laughs> but soccer, you know, it could be one one for an hour and a half. <laughs> And it seems like nothing's happening. Like the ball is just moving around. And it's not even getting close to the goals. <laughs> that's kind of funny that way. Oh, that's funny. I didn't mean to get you off track, but I no. love the, oh, the, the substitution in, in hockey. Yeah. Man. That's, that's my f- favorite thing about hockey, the way that I think all sports should substitute. Like that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to see that in football. Like the, yeah, like too. just no whistles, you know. The defense comes on, yeah. the offense comes off. Like <laughs> lines up and play. Yeah, and yeah. The guys kicking the ball at the other end, and they're still subbing. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> offense is coming on to try and pick up the ball, and <laughs> imagine the chaos, you know. I love it, man. That's the way it should be. It would be you interesting. Hey, my other hockey reference is Slap Shot. Oh, great, great movie, movie, yeah. Yeah, with the Hanson the Brothers. Brothers and, yeah, wearing tinfoil. Yeah, Paul their, Newman. Wearing tinfoil. Yeah, they're they're padding up for the game. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, padding up for the game, Coach? <laughs> oh, those are great, great shows. Great shows. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. A slap Shot. They said they, they made the bus look mean. They beat up the bus. <laughs> yeah, they were pretty much like uh, like professional wrestlers on ice, basically. Yeah, yeah they just went crazy when they were going to move. They just went all yeah. in. Yeah, that was a great. Yeah, comedy is a really important thing that I think everybody should uh, try and incorporate in their lives. Because you, you got to be able to laugh at yourself. And you got to be able to laugh at other people. And you just can't take things too seriously. No, like, no, uh, no. it seems, I don't know how, I'm sure it's similar in the States, but in Canada, you know, it's been, we've gotten so politically correct here. And it's like, you can't even sneeze without pissing somebody off anymore. Yeah, and it's like, man, yeah. like, let's get back a little. Like, you, you have to understand yeah. things are just jokes, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we need to laugh more, man. Like people need to laugh, and we need to laugh together. We all need to be yeah. united and laugh together. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Hey, how far are you from Toronto? Oh shit! I drove. Okay. Because um, they got big. That's big comedy time up yeah, there. Yeah, it, it, it would, would probably like take me four days to drive there. Uh, Damn, that is a long. Yeah, ride. like. Like forty-eight hours away in a car. Dang. Yeah, it kind of does freaking massive. I do. I still don't appreciate how big it is, but uh, I've done a few road trips. It's you know it's so expensive to fly in Canada that really? yeah, like it'll be. Uh, it cost me like a thousand bucks to fly out to Vancouver. Let's say. And it's uh, it's just two provinces over from me, so it's kind of crazy. I've got some family out there, and uh, actually, I had family down in Fort Worth, Texas. Really? Yeah, my See, Fort Worth's only about forty minutes. From oh, there. really? Oh, that's cool. I'd love yeah. to come down. I never, I never made it down there, but my uncle, who lived, he was my great uncle. He uh, he was an Air Force pilot. Um. And then he became a commercial pilot and lived down in Fort Worth and worked out of Dallas, mm. I think there was. Mm-hmm. But anyway, he passed away now. But um, I always wanted to come down to that area and kind of experience what they what they lived around. And and just he was he he was uh, he was pretty well off, and they had a he collected Lincolns, old cars, wow. and he would restore them in his he spare time. Fit. Did they have the did they have some of those fifty suicide door ones? I I think he did. I think he had one of them. Yeah, I think he had like four of them, and one of them had the the suicide doors. It was definitely the older. I love ones. that one, man. Yeah, like yeah, at suicide doors, those are neat. Oh, it's it's just a cool design. Yeah, it's a neat look. Mm-hmm. But uh, hey, if I ever make it down there, Vance, I'll give you a ring. I'll let you know I'm coming. Yeah. We can get up and do a. Do a DDPY session together or something. Let's do it. There's, there's a few people around here that, you know, Mary um, 
Pekaler uh, lives up the, between Dallas and Fort Worth, and and there's, there's quite a few people, man. Chase Green, I don't know, he he was probably, he might have been before you got involved. And yeah, I don't know. He's not far. And um, Justin Dobbin supposedly is going to make a road trip okay, down yeah. here soon. Yeah, Justin's got a great, we'll Justin's got a great outlook on things too, and uh, I really enjoyed watching him there on your podcast and i see him in the community all the time you know sharing a little bit about his his life and that's he's a serious dude yeah. man he's a he's a he's a serious dude i love that yes you know for as as nice as i come across i'm i'm very serious and i'm very competitive in nature and uh mm-hmm. i can a lot of times I can get caught up in my own bullshit, you know, and I just like, yeah. I'm so focused on something. I'm pissed off and mad and everybody else is like, Hey man, take a chill pill. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. You got me. Like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got me. <laughs> yeah thank you for calling me. So t- so, you know? Yeah. Hey, so tell us about your wife. All right. Um, you talked about your wife and your, and your son. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I've only been married for about two years now okay um i met her we've been together almost five years now and uh i had a series of other relationships and uh through my life and i always took them really seriously always thought that person was going to be the one and again i think that's because all those traumatic experiences I had in my life I always thought like I gotta hurry up and you know get on with it right and take the next step and uh, you know thank God none of those worked out (laughs) I would have been in a bad place now I look back and it's like a lot of those relationships were toxic that was bad bad stuff but of course you learn a lot and you grow and um, I'd kind of given up on relationships I was kind of done you know just like Seth was saying it's when you don't really want it that's when sometimes it comes into your life I guess and I was with a good friend of mine and we were having some drinks and uh, he's like oh get on this online dating app you know and I was like ah no no way like I I hate that online shit and I don't want to I don't want to join up and put my photo on there and whatever. Anyways, had a few more drinks. Next thing you know, I'm signed up for this stupid dating app. And about a week later, I match with my future wife. And uh, a couple days go by and we were just texting. Texting on our phones and we would planned a date to meet up and... uh, we went to my favorite restaurant. It's this local little Jamaican place in town here. And I was like, have you ever been here before? She says, no. So, you know, we set the date. Excuse me. We set the date up. And we hit it off. Hit it off. We had a great time. And um, I just loved how uh, how confident she was and how... Her sense of humor was incredible. It was my, it was my flavor, you know. Like, we uh, we understood each other, and she was serious, and she uh, she knew what she wanted out of life, and that's kind of how I thought I was. <laughs> but she really. Uh, what did she want? You know, she wanted. Uh, she knew what she wanted to do in her career. Like, she works in HR. And she took that real seriously. And it's funny, I was listening to your uh, interview with Stephanie. And uh, Mm -hmm. Stephanie reminded me a lot of my wife, like just her work ethic and working in HR and kind of creating opportunities for yourself. And um, I know it's tougher for women. You know, for so long it's been a a man's run world. And it's hard to kind of break into things. Maybe they just don't have that confidence or men don't take them as serious. And so I think you kind of got to, you got to fight a bit when you're a woman and you got to be aggressive and assertive. And so that's how my wife is. 
And I loved it. I was like, oh, here's a person who can call me out on my bullshit too, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just what I need, right? So uh, we hit it off. We started dating. Uh, we both love music. We were going to concerts. Uh, we're both fans of Elvis Presley. Uh, she loves Elvis. So we went and saw a couple Elvis impersonators, things like that. Some goofy fun times. And uh, years went by, and I thought, man, I think this is the one. This is, um, she's a first-generation Canadian, too. So she kind of has that foreign mindset a little bit. And we both have those funny family stories and traditions and and uh so i loved her family too that was a big thing they're polish so they're like you know her her dad's like the type of person where you know just put some dirt on it if you hurt yourself and drink some vodka and get back to work right so it'll grow back it'll grow back. exactly yeah and uh I always, I always love that mentality. It was always really inspiring for me. Like people who have grown up in communist countries and they've, they've seen some shit, you know. And so I, I was always attracted to that. I gravitated towards it because I always think here in Western civilization, a lot of these young kids run around. We got it so damn easy, you know. <laughs> and it's, yeah. We can't forget about that history, right? Because, uh, you know, I always think if things get too easy, you know, you you get to the peak and boom, you have a crash. So mm -hmm. I think in a lot of ways, you know, COVID and the way the world is right now, we're going through some tough times. And I think things will get a little worse before they get better. Um, yes. But anyways, so I think, I think it's good to learn about history. It always repeats. Exactly. Absolutely. As much as we say it's not, it is. <laughs> you know, you know, every every moment in time thought their error was special. Yeah. Different than the others. Yeah. But it it all repeats. People are people. No. And it all repeats itself. That's right. It's it's the bigger picture, right? It's like we're not mm -hmm. We're not any smarter than we were before. Sure, we do things differently, but man, people had strengths and weaknesses they had back then that were helping them thrive and survive in the dark ages or whatever. Like, it's just a different time, like you say. But uh, anyway, back to my wife. Um, so it's funny, right before I got diagnosed with this throat cancer, um, I decided to propose to her. So we were out at uh, their family cabin. We love going out to the cabin. and I'm so lucky her family's got this beautiful, you know, it's a little tiny dinky cottage, but it's a cottage, and I love it. So Is it in the woods? On the it is, yeah. In it's it's a, a lakefront property they bought about 30 years ago. There was nothing developed out there back then. They got it for like dirt cheap. And uh, it started to develop quite a bit more over the past 30 years. And uh, her dad built this cabin. It's about 24 by 12 feet. You know, he built it all by himself. And it's got just the bare necessities. It's got an outhouse still. <laughs> uh, but it's great. We love it. Anyways, we were out there. It was the winter time, and I thought this would be a special pay, place to propose. So we were out uh, just walking around all on the ice. It was all frozen over, right, and snow on it. And that's when I proposed to her. And she said yes, which was great. And then about a month after that, you know, she hit the fan. I got diagnosed with this throat cancer and she's you know she's crying and she's panicked and I go for the operation and I couldn't talk at all after the operation couldn't speak for it was about three months and uh, COVID had hit at the same time after my operation so all the hospitals were like shut down and 
Nobody gave me any assistance. I wasn't, I was in the hospital for less than 24 hours after my surgery. They sent me home, no guidance, nothing. They didn't tell me to start doing physio or start doing speech therapy, anything like that. In the early days, nobody knew shit. What was oh, yeah, and I think everybody was just so panicked and all those policies came yeah. in and everything just shut down. So I think I just kind of fell through the cracks. And, man, I'd, I'd spent so much time in the hospital in my life, I didn't really care. I was like, thank God they shipped me back home. And uh, I'm home. I was happy about that. But, of course... Um, my my wife was kind of like, you know, completely shocked after this. And I joked her. I was like, well, thank goodness I uh, proposed to you before I lost my voice. Because it would be kind of <laughs> awkward going on dates now and uh, writing down my thoughts on a piece of paper and <laughs> showing it to uh, the person. I Man, they probably would have ran so fast. <laughs> But eventually, uh, I've got a couple of really good friends. And uh, one of my friends came over and he started kind of advocating for me. He was doing phone calls and trying to get some information on what uh, what I can do to start start recovering, what kind of rehab I can do. All right. We're back on and I cut you off. You were about to start talking about your friends searching around and finding you some rehab to do for your neck actually. yeah yeah absolutely so I, I was lucky to have um, a couple of real close friends who helped support me and get some answers and um, you know it was again I kind of beat myself up because I always thought well what if there was no COVID and what if the hospital would have uh, given me some direction you know the day after I was discharged from the hospital, I feel like I could have been so much further ahead than I am now um, with my speech and with the pain and and uh, just kind of understanding how it's affected my body. But that's not the case, right? So <laughs> here we are. I found DDPY and man, that was uh, that was all I did for for physical therapy for about uh, six months and then finally I found out that I should actually be working with like a specialist who can give me targeted exercises for my neck because I have these uh, I hate calling it a headache but I have head pain on the left side here and it's it's partially due to nerve damage and partially due to that you know the scar tissue is so tight there that I'm kind of you know it's all stretching down and and whatnot so it was about a year too late but I've started started getting into it now and I'm taking it <laughs> taking it real serious now but again I live what did you sorry go ahead did you tell them to straighten, you know, get rid of this while they were working on you and take out, all, you know, tighten you up around here, <laughs> give you that chiseled look? Yeah, that's right. A good Roman chin, you know? Yeah, that's right. My wife, uh, my wife joked, uh, I got a free facelift, you know? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> it's a hard way to get a facelift. That's lift. right. That's right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a journey, man. Um, I'm I'm getting better. It's still it's still challenging, and there's still a lot of aches and pains. Um, but I've what you what your wife think about DDPY? <laughs> well, hold on, one more thing before we get to that. Um, right. The area I live in it's so small, right? And I remember when I was a kid, my dad took me to a WWF house show. And uh, we had to travel for it to this, you know, the city. And um, it was at this arena where, like, it holds 5,000 people or whatever. And, uh, oh, there's uh, there's Jet saying hi. Hey, Jet, how's it going? <laughs> anyway, we went to this arena. And uh, it was the middle of winter. It was freezing cold. And it's this small town. 
right? Uh, 200,000 people live there. And Christian, when he was first starting his wrestling career, you know, Edgy Christian and Gangrel. And uh, Christian was on the night. I'm not, I never was a wrestling No, I don't know. I didn't even know who DDP was. Really? Oh, man. Mm -mm. I think you'd like wrestling. If you like sports, you'd probably like wrestling. (laughs) But anyway, I was this wrestler, Christian. And he had the microphone. He was kind of, he was a bad guy, right? A heel. A heel, yeah. I know the terms, a heel and for the uh, baby face and heel, DDP. I I was going to say heel, but you say you weren't a wrestling fan, so I did say bad guy. (laughs) (laughs) No, DDP made sure I knew the terms. Okay, yeah. Anyways, uh, he he was a heel at the time, and he's on the mic, and he says, here we are, we're in the pimple on the ass of Canada. (laughs) because that's how small the area is right and so through my whole health journey uh you know i live in this small community and like what the hell kind of doctor would want to come work here when they could be making big money in the in this big centers in the big city you know the torontos or the new yorks of the world and so i've always kind of felt that uh with all my health issues, they're probably, I probably could have got better care if I grew up in, you know, New York or had better access, right? Um, but I've worked with what I got. And uh, anyway, anyway, you asked what my wife thinks of DDPY and, and all of this. And okay, so another thing I love, love about my wife is... Um, She's a very active person. When I met her, she had run a half marathon. And I'd never met anybody who'd run a half marathon before. I was just so intrigued by this, right? And she's never had a freaking health problem in her life. Never spent a day in the hospital till she delivered our son. And I just couldn't believe that. I was like, are you serious, you know? Here's me. I, if I tallied it up, it's like hundreds of days I've spent in the hospital, right? And uh, I was just like, shit, this is the person I want to be with. They're almost the opposite of me in, in a lot of ways. Uh, yeah, you hope, you hope your son gets more of her. Oh. Than you. <laughs> Absolutely. We joke about that all the time. I'm like, oh, I hope you got all your genetics because I'm, I'm just a... A bag of broken, broken glass here, basically. But um, you know, you know. But I, I've been meaning to ask you. I, I always thought skin cancers were like in sunny regions. I wouldn't <laughs> think, you know, people up there in Saskatchewan. Well, like, hey, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Canada yeah. is uh, what 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 would have a, the the uh, 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 you know skin cancer issue. Well, it's it's funny. So in Saskatchewan. We get the most daylight out of anywhere else in the country. Yeah. yeah. So in the in the summertime, the sun will come up sometimes like 4.30 in the morning. And it will be up to almost 11 o'clock at night. And uh, we don't have any mountains or anything here. Like I said, it's the bald prairie for the most part. So you, like you see that sunset... It's uh, the the sunsets and the sunrises here are something else. I'll have to send you a couple photos, and like they're I didn't put any filters on them or anything. It's uh, we I call them cotton candy skies because they just yeah. they have that pinkish. You know, you probably get nice sunsets there in Texas too, similar to that. But uh, damn, do we get a lot of sunshine here? I've got friends who have moving uh, to Saskatchewan from Eastern Canada or Western Canada, and they say one of the big reasons is the daylight. They're like, yeah, it gets down to minus 40 Fahrenheit in the winter, and you go outside and your snot freezes in your nose. (laughs) But it's sunny out, so, you know, there's something to that, because I think that vitamin D, that sunshine, that, that helps keep a person positive and it keeps you healthy. Um... In my case, not so much, just because genetically on my 
both of my parents' sides, we've had that skin cancer, so I I wear a lot of long sleeve outside and, and a hat on a lot, but but I take a lot of vitamin D. Uh, so I take about 10,000 uh, U of vitamin D every day. So it's it's quite a bit, but I do notice it, it, it makes me feel better. When I don't have it, I don't feel as good. And the winter, the winter can be brutal. Because, uh, you know, opposed to the summer, the sun can only be up for, you know, we can go a week without seeing the sun if it's overcast. Um, and it doesn't come up till, you know, 9 in the morning. It sets at 4.30 in the afternoon. So <laughs> it's different. But that's another thing I love about living here is... Um, I always say you can't appreciate you can't appreciate the summer without that brutal winter. Mm -hmm. So it's like we get that snow and we get that cold, but when uh, you know when February March rolls around, you can tell things are changing and it puts you into a different frame of mind. Hey, have, have you ever read that, that short story by Jack London called "To Build a Fire"? Mm -hmm. You ever read that? I have not. It's about being on on the Yukon, you know, during the gold rush days and trying to build a fire after he fell in the water um, in the middle of the of the winter. It's a real, it's a real short story, but it's brutal. Man. I got about uh, I got about ten things here now. You've told me about, and I'm just yeah. jotting them down. Vance, I'm going to be busy for the next three months. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 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 that to build a fire is worth reading. Okay. It's, a, it's a great short story. And another great short story that Ernest Hemingway right. wrote is the short, short and happy life of Francis um, McCu McGu McGu something, McGill McGovey or something. The short and happy life of Francis. It's, it's Muck something. Muck, Muck something. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll write that down. Get that down. Yeah, for, uh, did, you, did you did you find the right name? Francis. Uh, no, nope, that's not it. Did, did it pop up? Francis. It's a Hem there it is. Yeah, got it. Hemingway. Got it. Yeah, what's the last name? Macomber. Is that how you say it? Mac Macomber. Macomber. Short Fran the, yeah, the, the short happy life. That uh, that is Hemingway at his final. Okay. Life. Yeah, I I've uh, you know I've read a lot about Hemingway, but I haven't read a lot of his <laughs> his writing. And he's. He's brutal on he's brutal on life. He his outlook on life is kind of like you know is yours about the suffering and the brut yeah. and brutality of it. And it's not a rosy it's not a rosy um, outlook. Well, I like that. So anyway, I've always gravitated yeah. to uh, suffering and and uh, yeah. you know depressing music and things like that. Like, I've always just loved it. Yeah. So I'm sure I'll eat that up hey, too. Well, tell me what you think about the short, happy life of Francis. McCoy. I will. We should have to do a follow-up interview once I've had a chance that's to right. go through all your uh, suggestions here. See, that's what I love about meeting new people, is they have all these different experiences to share with you. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of that stuff's going to be right up my alley. So thank you for sharing that. All right. Yeah, I keep cutting you off, though, before you get to your wife and DDP. -Y. No, that's fine. My wife, at first, she thought it was outrageous, okay? She was like, what is this yoga that you're doing? And, she, you know, she was never a wrestling fan. She's like, who is this Dallas Diamond guy? You know, she always get his name wrong and and all this. And uh, But she saw how much I was struggling after my latest surgery and losing my voice and and uh, my mobility issues and the pain I was in. And um, she saw how I gravitated toward it and how much it meant to me. And so she, she got on board with it. You know, she started to make an effort to learn about it. Um, and she, for my birthday, that year after my surgery, she bought me a a DDP cameo, so I, I still wow. I still watch it from time to time, but she kind of shared the whole story with them about all that crap I was going through, and uh, he addressed a lot of it, and he's like, you know, uh, you know, you know, DDP is right. You know, watch this, you know, do this, do that, 
and uh, he told a little bit about his story and it was just it was just fuel on the fire man i was like all right okay this is for real let's do it so she's that, dude, that dude's going that dude's going 24 7 all the time i mean every time i've been out there that so much doesn't slow down he's working out you know he'll, he'll he'll come home at, at night. You know, like we finally get home. Yeah. Uh, the, the the one time I one or two times I stayed at his house. Then he'd lay in the floor. He, he's trying these. He's got this some kind of deal that you lay on that helps the blood flow that it, you know he got from somewhere. Okay. And he's doing stretching on it at night while he's watching TV. He just never stops. You know, and he's got these um, two. He's got two now. Barry uh, barometric pressure chambers oh cool that he gets in yeah he's got two of those he gets in that every day and then he saunas and then, yeah you know, and he and the guy and, and the guy never stops man. man and he's calling people and i mean he just never stops i i love that i i've tried to live like that too um i'm so set on getting a sauna like i keep telling the wife we're gonna get a sauna <laughs> <laughs> she, I want to sign. Yeah, up. yeah. I think they're so healthy for you, and that's interesting. You mentioned the barometric chambers, because our our barometric changes here are so drastic in this extreme climate. And I think if you can regulate that, you're going to be healthier. Your body's going to work better. So that's funny. You're saying he lays on. My wife always makes fun of me because when I watch TV, I'm always laying on the floor. Um, doing these weird stretches that I kind of make up and uh, incorporate a little DDPY in there too. But uh, I just, I I can't sit still. I don't know if I've got ADD or something, but like I always need to be going. And um, like even my desk I have here on my computer, it's a stand-up desk because I just like, like being able to stand up or sit down or... Um, I, it's, yeah. it's close to my treadmill too so a lot of times if I'm watching TV I'll be on the treadmill just walking I, I just need to be doing something so that's that's cool I, but then again you know you gotta watch so you don't burn yourself out yeah. you don't want to injure yourself and you don't want to burn yourself out cause and you're stuck in the bed again right so yeah but uh, hey, hey so tell yeah. so tell me when you go to your your wife's dad's can't uh, uh cabin. yeah do y'all do any ice fishing yes yeah we do, do y'all have like a little house you push out <laughs> on the ice and then drill a hole in the yeah ice yeah i've got a i've got an auger in my storage room here and uh and we take it out we drill holes in the ice me and a couple of my my buddies we we built an ice shack a couple of years ago it's basically just like a shed we put some skids on it so they can put it in the back of their truck and we go out and drop it off on the ice. And man, it gets so cold here. We need to put an extension on our ice auger and it goes down about five feet. That's how thick the ice is. So no problem, you can drive your truck out on there. People are ripping around on quads and skidoos and just having a blast. Some people shovel out the ice, they play hockey out in front of their ice shacks. Some people go, they go skeet shooting out on the ice. <laughs> it's just, it's a riot. It's a riot. It's, uh, I wish everybody could experience uh, that sort of stuff. It's. So, so what are you fishing for? Muskie, pike? What are you fishing for? Well, yeah, typically. Trout? Typically pike, uh, trout, some lake trout. And uh, we have fish called walleye. I don't know if you have them around there. Well, we don't, well, but. Uh, no, not really. No. I've never caught one. I've uh, never read about them. I understand they're the best eating. Yeah. Fish. Oh, yeah. They are. Yeah. So we always try to go for walleye, but it's a little more rare. Pike are easier to catch. Uh, we call them jackfish around here. So I don't know why they got they got ten different names, right? But <laughs> but yeah, walleye. You got a fish on the bottom. They're bottom fish. Yeah, they are. And uh, I don't know if you have you ever heard of burbot fish. Mm -mm. Oh, they're kind of like, oh, they're ugly fish. They they look like a, like a catfish kind of, and they're bottom feeders. They they literally they kind of crawl across the bottom of the lake. But if you catch one, we call it poor man's lobster. Like you bring one up, and they are just delicious, just delicious. What's it called? A burbot. 
Bourbon. Bourbon. How do you spell it? Oh, geez, I don't even know. Not bourbon, but bourbon. <laughs> bourbon. I'll have to check it out. It's B U R B O T. Bourbon, yeah. Yeah, and they can My get. My son's a chef. He's always looking for a different fish to try. Oh, cool. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I'd recommend. Yeah, if you haven't, a walleye, if you can get your hands on a walleye. Um, delicious. Lake trout, delicious. So we uh, we travel about 12 hours north of where I live. Me and my father-in-law, a couple of his friends, and my wife, we go fishing at this lake. It's the 24th biggest lake in the world. But it's it's about a 12-hour drive from here. It's still in Saskatchewan, but it's up there. It's called Reindeer Lake, okay? There's 5,000 islands in this lake. So that gives you an idea of how big it is. Yeah. And uh, we catch lake trout out there, and it is just a ball. So we'll we'll catch lake trout all morning. We'll get up early, catch lake trout all morning. We'll stop on an island somewhere, and we got this whole island to ourselves. We'll fry up this fresh lake trout, you know, with some onions and uh, some bell peppers or whatever. Eat that down. Get back on the water. Go fishing some more catch a few more of them and we go back to camp and uh my father-in-law and his buddies they they rig up this plywood smoker and we'll smoke the fish season them up and we have a little portable uh, vacuum sealer so we'll we'll vacuum seal them store them and then we bring them back and you know then you can freeze them or or eat them at a later point so that's kind of it's it's wonderful. I just love doing that kind of stuff. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's kind of. What you, yeah, what's your son's name? His name's Hank. Hank. Yeah. He doesn't get a Rocco. He doesn't get like a Rocco name. No, no. Uh, we we had some on the list. It was funny, you know. My wife went for an ultrasound. We got told we were having a daughter. Okay, so we're all ready for a daughter and. You know, it's it's funny. I, do you know the singer Rufus Wainwright? No. no. Okay, he's he's like a country singer songwriter, and he's pretty popular, I think, in some of the states in Canada. But anyway, he's got this song. It's called Daughter. And I remember, so I'm in I'm in the the room we're prepping for the baby, the nursery, and I'm painting the walls, and I got this playlist on Spotify. And this song comes on daughter and you know he's talking about raising a daughter and all these i'm getting emotional while i'm listening to the song because i'm thinking about oh my god this could be my daughter's room one day and and uh you know like a couple months go by my wife goes into labor and we're in the hospital and it's a boy <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, so I look back, I'm like, <laughs> man, was I ever a pathetic idiot, you know? Here I am, I'm in the, the nursery painting, basically shedding tears, thinking I'm going to have a daughter, and now i got a boy. But that's great, that's great. Um, yeah. I was happy, Hank. I was happy either way. So we didn't have... What's his middle name? Uh, his name's Roman, his middle name's Roman. Hank Roman Lorenzo? Yes, yeah. All right, yeah, very cool. What a, we we had the name Giovanni, which is an Italian name. We had that picked out as his first name, and uh, I said to my wife, I said, you know what? I don't want this poor kid to get teased in school with <laughs> a name like Giovanni. You know, teachers are going to be butchering that, and uh, so we said on Hank. And I said, you know what? You did all the work. You carried the baby. You're the mom. Whatever you think's best, let's let's go with that. So that's how we settle on Hank. Very cool. Uh, 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 Hank Williams Jr. <laughs> Hank Williams. Yeah, well, that crossed our minds a little bit. Yeah, we. I don't know. Did you ever watch uh, Breaking Bad? Yeah, I watched all. So of there that. was the the father-in-law, Hank. He was the, the police officer yeah, there, the, 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 the DEA agent, right? And we always thought, yeah. like, that guy, he was such a hard-ass in the show. He was a he was a real badass. And uh, 
when I think back on the series now, like he was a hero a little bit, right? So that was kind of inspiration a bit for the name too. That character, Hank. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Man, Breaking Bad was, was an awesome show. Oh, it was great. Great show. I got into it, yeah. yeah. I got into. I never could get into Better Call Saul. I, yeah, I, uh, I never. You know, I'd watch it. I think I watched a season or so, but I, I never really. I love that, um, the investigator. Oh, I've seen one, that. Well, no, 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 no. The uh, the investigator that walked that worked for Better Call Saul. He was oh. in Breaking Bad, the old dude. And uh, oh, Mike, he's, he's yeah. Old, yeah, yeah, Mike, the old ball headed. Yeah, dude, he, I loved him. Yeah, but he couldn't. He still couldn't keep my interest in Better Saul. Saul. But I loved him. Yeah. You know? If you go, if you ever go back and try to watch again, if you make it through season one, it starts it starts to get good. It starts to really. Yeah. Yeah, I had a hard time with the first two seasons, but uh, I still haven't finished it. I don't know what happens, but I'm very sporadic with TV watching. I um, I'm bad at bad at making time to finish shows, but I think I seen up through they burned down his brother's house. Yes, yeah, killed his brother or something. I'm, I've seen up through that. I think. Yeah, yeah. That Mike Mike was a great character too. Uh, I think he. I think Mike. that uh, actor passed away recently. He did. Yeah, I think so. It's too bad. I was watching yeah, a great character. I was watching. Oh, it was one of those old movies from the eighties or nineties. But anyways, that Mike was in there, and he had a he had hair, and I didn't recognize him, no goatee or anything. And my wife says, "Hey, that's Mike from Breaking Bad." And oh shit, it is too. Like, look at him. Hey. <laughs> Where's your is your boy getting any sleep? He is. Yeah, he's he's starting to sleep good now. And he's growing like a weed now. He's, he's, um. How old is he? Um, he will be, he's coming up to six months. So oh, he's just. Really? You feeding him cereal yet? Getting not. Sticking cereal in Not him? yet, but, uh, you know, my wife, she's big on nutrition too, and I try to be. <laughs> And uh, so she's been thinking about, you know, what's our first foods we're going to introduce them to. And, and we've heard avocado is a good one or, you know, pureed chicken and stuff. So, you know, all these experiences I've had in my life and through the DDPY and all that. It's like maybe, maybe I can try and set my kid up on the right path from an early age, right? Give them the tools right from the get-go. And I know, of course, kids, you know, they'll make up their mind. They'll do what they want. But uh, mm -hmm. we got to at least try, right? we got to put, it, yeah. put an effort in. Well, you know, the example, I think, is more than anything. Yeah. It's the example. You know, they're always watching you. Even though they, they're rebelling, they're always watching. Yeah, I think they're, they're absorbing it in uh, mm -hmm. subconsciously, right? Because I look at Amazing. You... Yeah, yeah, years later they'll say something and you, know, you don't even have a memory of it, you know, or you remember it differently. You know? Oh, yeah. I, or you say something different now. Yeah. And he said, well, that ain't what you said before. Yeah, it's like, I didn't say that. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I wouldn't say that shit. Yeah. Whoever told you that's full of shit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That guy was a liar. Yeah, whoever said that. <laughs> It's like, you know, but nowadays the kids have got the cameras all the time. My, yeah. my kid will be able to play it back and, and be like, oh, no, you're full of shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's funny. Yeah, all right, man. Let's see. Uh, so what's the future hold? You, you, I know that one time you said... You didn't think you had a future. Yeah. You thought that at any time you could fall. You still have those thoughts? I do, but I'm working on it. <clears throat> I'm really I'm really working on it. And that's a thing that uh, going to counseling has helped with. Because um, once you start to see it all out all the time, you start to realize 
kind of sounds silly, and you got to start you start thinking differently. So I'm just, I'm trying to slow down. <laughs> I'm trying to slow down. I'm trying to stop burning that candle at both ends. And I'm trying to live in the moment. I'm trying to realize that. And you know, Dallas, Dallas and Steve have been a good inspiration too. Like Dallas always says, he's a an eight year overnight success, right? Yeah. And I think that's a huge part of the challenge with all of this getting healthy and accomplishing things in your life and pursuing new activities or learning, whatever, education, whatever it is. I've always been um, in a rush. So I think I need to realize things take time and... Uh, you know, it's like the tortoise and the hare, right? It's the slow and steady wins the race. So if you if you stay focused, you stay consistent, you'll you'll get there. So with a lot of the things in my future, like I would love to eventually put out my own little video game, and um, I kind of want to make it so my son can enjoy it one day kind of like a testament the thing i love about the video game idea is i can compose music for it and i can uh i can draw the characters right i love i love art too i love drawing mm -hmm. painting all those sorts of things so i can i can create characters for it and and monsters and things like that and um and then write the story and so it's 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 like I can take everything that I love from the creative world and, and combine it into one, one, um, one product or one project, I guess. Well, how do you get to? I mean, what um, <laughs> what steps you you, you got? Uh, what, what steps of your, of your future look like to get you there? I mean, you sound pretty motivated to do I, it. I am. I am motivated. I I'm lucky. I have a friend that I grew up with that. Um, I did art together when I was a kid, and he's been quite successful. He's, he's a full-time video game programmer. He works independently for himself, and he still lives uh, out on a farm around here. And so um, I've been lucky to be able to bounce questions off him, and he, you know, he believes in me, right? He says, you can do it. So um, that's been a good resource. And then, of course... I, be, I signed up for some courses online, and I've been taking them over the past few months here. Um, and just in my spare time, I just really try to stay disciplined. I've kind of fallen off the rails again here for the past two, two-ish months. But um, I think that's my body's way of telling me I need a rest. I need to, I need to take some time to focus on my health, and then I can get back to back to the grind a bit so yeah i think just through education the online resources uh reaching out to people who are familiar with it and staying disciplined and a part of that is is staying on top of my health right because you can't you can't perform if you're not if you're not healthy so well, uh, ddp talks about a goal without a plan is just a wish. <laughs> exactly <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's easy to dream. It's easy to dream, but it's harder to put one foot in front of the other and uh, kick your butt and start doing it. It's like, because goals, you know, goals are just a bunch of micro goals, right? It's uh, step one. I mean, when I first started looking into uh, app development and, and video game development programming, I was just blown away about the scope of it, right? And I was lost, and I thought, oh, I'll never be able to do this because it's, I'm not capable. It's its too difficult. But then, you know, you start bringing it down, and uh, I've made a couple of little games like Pong, you know, I've <laughs> recreated that. And it, it gives you... Really? Really? So, so you programmed your own Pong? Game? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, that's cool. So that's good. Hey, that was that was a big deal back in my day when Pong came. Heck out. yeah! Man, that, was, heck, that was huge. Heck man. yeah! 
I played it on a kid. I played it as a kid when I had an Atari. Played on there, yeah. and um, so yeah, it, it gives you confidence, and it's the it's the building blocks. It's the the stepping stones to the next thing. So, I mean, I might you know I you know I look at my life. You know, I've come through uh, personal computing. You know, when I was in uh, graduate high school in '83, and they were. Uh, teaching computer science and personal computings were just starting. And um, and then I lived through iPhones and iPhone <laughs> apps. And I've lived through all these big um, steps in, in um, technology and opportunities, and I'm still broke as shit. You know, I just... I just, I just you know, I, you know, I feel like I missed all these offers. You know, I, I, why didn't I think? Yeah. That, you know, I, 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 surely I could have come up with something. For sure, yeah, yeah. You yeah. feel that way, but yeah, I mean, just keep doing what you love. You know, keep yeah. taking care of your health and keep. Uh, I mean, you're a lawyer, man. That's a huge accomplishment. Like I. Yeah, but I hate being alone. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What, well, I mean, you're doing you're doing this life coaching and you're doing the podcast. And I do like that stuff. You're learning. I love the podcast. I love just talking to people. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody's aggravating me about how long they are, but I, uh, you know, I just love the beauty of the medium and, you, and getting to know people. You, you know, know what? I've watched a couple of yours. At first, I was like, mm -hmm. "Oh shit, three hours! Like that's a commitment." Mm -hmm. You know, but. I, Again, I can break it down, right? You do, I don't have to listen to it all at once. No, you don't even have to listen to it. You just, you know, it's like that's the beauty of the medium. You, 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 you do the deal. You put it out there. You move on to the next. Yeah. And if somebody wants to listen to it, they can listen to it. If they want to start it, you know, while they're working, and you know, they can start it. And if it doesn't appeal to them, they can go on to something else. Exactly. You know, or the, you can you can skip ahead if you want. You know. Yeah. Whatever, and that's. Again, that's a part of like reframing my mind about uh, mm -hmm. you don't have to do everything all at once. Like I, I get so obsessed yeah. on one thing. It's like if I, I pop your podcast with Candy, you know, and it's like, okay, I'm I'm sitting down, I'm focusing on this podcast. But no, I mean, I can go back to it. I can listen to 15 minutes. Yeah. And, and it's just like with these goals in life. You take the baby steps. You don't overwhelm yourself, right? Well, it's like these audio books, you know. Yeah. I just let them play in the background while I'm working, and or like today I went out kayaking for a while. Oh, nice! I let it play uh, for the, while I was kayaking, and um, you know, or if I'm commuting to work, I just let it play. Sometimes my, you know, it's not a, it's not like as near as active as reading. You know, you just let it. It, you know, we're used to having having the background TV or music or talk or something, yeah. and, and you just zone in and out if something catches your attention. And you know, it's yeah, just that's the, right. It's just the um, the beauty. I know nobody wants to listen to me. <laughs> hours, but, you know, at least, yeah, if they, you know, if they want to, if, if something catches their, you know, they learn something, or if I can help someone in some other way, you know, it's worth me putting in the time. No, no, I. I mean, people do want to listen to you for three hours, and it's about finding. I don't know. <laughs> it's a you know, you've got a beautiful community here, and uh, people are interested in these stories, and you're doing a great service to uh, to the DDPY community by by doing Thank this. Because so many times, you know, you see one of the videos that they put up on the DDPY page, or you know, they spotlight somebody on Fridays or whatever, Motivational Monday or whatever. And it's just, you know, it's just a three or five minute story. And uh, I love, I love history, right? So I'm like, I want to know more about that person. I want to know, you know, what, how was their, how was it like when they were a kid? Where did they grow up? You know, did they like sports? Did they have friends? You know, did their parents get married? Were they divorced? I just love all those granular details, and uh, I think you're doing it. And you, ne you never know what's going to relate to you. Exactly. You never know that's going to say, shit, that's, you know, that, you know, 
that hits me. That sounds yeah. just like me. You know? Or what you can learn, right? If it's, yeah. like I was saying before, if you don't think of things, don't put yourself in someone else's shoes, you're going to live a... You're going to live a, a not great life, I don't think. <laughs> no. Well, I agree, man. Well, what's the, but, but see, you got the, uh, what, what's, what about your electrician job? Are you, uh, in uh, Canada, do they have the equivalent of a journeyman and a master le- electrician? They, they do. I, the job I do, I don't have to be, um, certified for it because i do a lot of low voltage work so i'm running a like ethernet cable um fiber optic cable things like that so it's it's more of a that new technology right Mm -hmm. and so i've even got into um like av things i love which is great because i love audio video i love music i love sound i love a good sound system I'm a bit of an audiophile, and um, mm-hmm. I love a good picture too, right? You know, big projection mm-hmm. screens or IMAX theaters, that sort of stuff. I oh, love. You're, de- you're definitely a creative mind. You've definitely got the creative mind. Yeah, yeah. So it's fun that uh, I fell into the work of doing the the physical side of it. So you get to see all the components come together and see how they build a movie theater, right? How many speakers are there? And I've, I've helped set up for uh, music festivals, things like that. So it's, it's kind of taken me on a different path. And um, I mean, again, all those things, I think they just come together and it gives you those skills, you know, photography, music, audio, video, you know, go, like from work and laying the cable all the way to design and the pamphlets it's kind of everything in between and i mean i would love you and can you and candy you and candy are doing the same thing <laughs> you i you know it's funny i thought i hit it off with her and i didn't know why i i just some gravitated me to her i liked who she seems to be but i didn't know anything about her job so that's funny you know I maybe mean, we've got that similar personality I'm going to reach out to her after this and, and say, Vance, yeah. Zan, Vance gave me the dirt on you. So, <laughs> Yeah. And let, well, listen to her podcast. She talks about it. You know? yeah. 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 Don't mind. Don't mind me is when I, when I, when I get kind of starry eyed, when she starts talking about working the fashion. <laughs> beside, that. <laughs> beside that part, you know, it, 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 well, it, Hey, uh, Hey, that's just a, I think that's something every man suffers from, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, you know, I got a squirrel there. That's me. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But, uh, but I think the future, I mean, I'm still young. I'm just starting to feel healthy for the first time in my life, really. So I, I think the possibilities are, are endless. And if I, if I stick, stay determined and consistent, I think I can accomplish just about anything. And just knowing that, uh, Things are going to get hard, and I'm going to go through rough patches, but I can always get back on the horse, right? So, I mean, I'd love to do something like you're doing or get involved in the DDPY community a little bit more. Like, I've even thought, I mean, they got to be working on an app. Like, they're probably doing a redesign or something like that. I'd love to get into the programming of that or you know, help out with that. I remember watching the Shark Tank episode and they were trying to secure funding so they could develop the app. Yeah. And I was like, shit, I wish I would have met Dallas and Steve back then. I would have been like, I'll build it for you for free. Like, man, I'll, mm-hmm. I'm still learning programming, but, it, you know, with a project like that, you'd get so motivated. And I, I, would, I would put my nose to the grind, you know, I would do it. So hey, if you get involved, I have a request. Sure. And, and I've mentioned it to Steve a couple of times, but he, there seemed to be a financial cost that uh, that uh, discouraged it. But you know, you know, they got so many uh, exercises on the app, so many lives, so many. You know, I want to deal. Uh, you know, you. So, 
you know, you're sitting there when you want to try to find something new or something different, and, you know, you're tired of doing the same thing, and you're trying to pick a nap, and you can't remember what this one was or what that was. I want to deal like a damn uh, spinning wheel, like you put in, you know, yellow, you know, you put in a couple of parameters and hit search, and it yeah. spits you out an app to do. That would be great. You know, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a... Um, it, it 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 random a random pick based on your search parameter. I'm right. In. That's what I want. I want them to do it. But St- I, Steve didn't sound too interested to it when I pitched it. To oh, him. I think that'd be a great idea. I um, yeah. I find that kind of as a shortcoming of the app as well. It would be nice to uh, mm-hmm. to be able to find things a little easier or. Um, yeah just kind of organize the information that's there in a better way there's so much information yeah, so I, much great stuff. i know with uh, you were talking about seth um with seth and him he uses the dvds but he was thinking about getting into the app and um you guys were talking about how how it can be kind of uh, overwhelming when you first get into it and let's say you're somebody who you buy the DVDs, but you get the 30-day free trial of the app. And you go in there and you're like, holy shit, where do I start? You know, what do I do? That's right. And I know they make the custom program for you. But even it took me about a month to figure out there was a program option. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah I, I, I'm going to write that idea down. I'm... I'll see if I can make something, you know. Like I, yeah, make it happen. Make it happen. You know, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Candy told me, shit, I've been doing it now, what, uh, four and almost going on four and a half years. Uh, or, well, going on, I said, just a little over four years. I started in January of, of well, uh, of 18. Okay. And, um, and um, I've been on a little over four years. But, uh, when my pops up, I still mine pops up to this. Um, uh, Mary's used to picking the app, but picking the, the pro, the, which one we're gonna do the workout. But it it pops up to like um, a training screen or or and um, Candy said I have to watch all those and they'll tell you how to use the app to to get to the one you're supposed to be getting popped up. Okay. You know, so I, so I, so for four, over 4 years and and I'm still I hadn't watched it yet. I'm still getting this this <laughs> this this one I should have I should have watched 4 years ago, you know. Oh, and, yeah. and I never knew it until Candy told me that. Well, that's just it. Like I'd love to uh Yeah, I've got some ideas for the app too and I mean, I'm always a little um shy to reach out to to anybody that works at DDPY. I feel like I'm bothering people all the time, you know, and mm-hmm. or like I'm just this guy out in the community who who uh isn't really on their level, right? But I guess what's that called? Well, Steve you're on you're on Steve's radar, I mean. Yeah, maybe I should add him on Facebook and shoot him a message and do some brainstorming or something. I don't know. Yeah. I know everybody's busy, but I feel like there's a lot of refinements that could be made and make it a little more user friendly for people, and um, and I think that would help the app grow. I feel like uh, make it more accessible and and uh, more people would have success, right? So mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a it's a it's a neat app, but yeah, I mean, you know, it, as as always, improvements can be made, but it's a it's just amazing how many people this whole program's helped, and 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 what amazes me is that they can get seventy thousand people, and they can keep them all positive and yeah. supportive. You know, those people monitoring that Facebook group is just, yeah. you know, shit. There's, there's not. I don't think there's anything on the internet out there that's that supportive and positive with that many people. I don't think so either. I mean, I've I've spent time on websites like Reddit or. Um, yeah. uh, you know, Twitter, whatever, right? And he, there's always negativity. Like there's always, yeah. there's always the clash because anybody can go in there. So with that DDPY community, like, man, if I'm having a rough day, I go in there and I read posts for an hour till I, I'm like, okay, 
I feel a bit better now, right? So, and I didn't even find out about that group till a couple months ago. And it's funny. Candy actually told me about it. Um, Candy, did yeah. You? yeah. I mean, somebody's got to tell you about it because it's well. Uh, uh, you know, Dallas started doing the the uh, Facebook Friday to get to highlight more stories, but still, you have to be in the app to even and and know where to get the Facebook Friday. Yeah. Apps, yeah. That's part of my deal because this different video is coming up on the initial screen because I hadn't watched it yet. But I have to click through to get the face, you know, the uh, motivational Mondays and Facebook Fridays to come up in the correct spot. Exactly. Yeah. I I wasn't working through that very well myself, and uh, when I found out about that community, it was just a whole. I was like, shit. There's this huge group of people here that I had no idea about and for my first year basically doing DDPY I was I was in that positively unstoppable group and there was only a I think about a thousand people in there still a great number but not as much uh, activity and not as many stories it was more about people um, documenting the, their journey step by step but I love hearing the the big story like the you know like your story you know everything's it was all put together so nicely and and it's easy to digest when you watch it right so that's the that's steve and dylan's beauty there that's uh their storytelling <laughs> you know so. well that's great but well yeah all right, man, I think I've kept you over three hours after I cut the restroom break out. I think we'd be a little less, but we, we can you believe I still kept you on here for three I, hours? I can't believe it. It feels yeah. like we've been talking for an hour, maybe. Yeah. It's, it's been so good talking with you, Vance. Like, I, yeah. I love what you're doing, and your story's been so motivational for me, too, and inspiring. So uh, anytime you want to talk. You let me know. I'll make time. And uh, so, hey, let me know what you think about that Hemingway story. Yes, absolutely. I can't wait to dive into some of those things you told me about today. I uh, this is my first time ever doing a podcast or an interview or anything like that. So it's been a lot of fun. All right. Well, share it on your social media. And I've just I finally got my website up and running transform with vance and i'm starting to add stuff to it and instead of just using the Podbean webs website so i finally got my custom domain pointed toward it and um, it's it's got it working this week so it's gonna it'll be on the podcast but it should be any um uh, basically any streaming i think the only one that hadn't um responded yet was like tune in or uh, or one of those okay. but i think it's on uh, maybe i uh, i think i'm on iheart but i don't know one of the one of the big ones that hadn't responded yet but but it's basically it's on apple and it's on spotify and it's on you know i think 75 80 percent of the, oh, uh, uh, yeah, the platform oh that's too. cool i'll be able to listen back and be like oh man i sound like an idiot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, man, you did good. You did. Oh, good. thank you. That, that, you're gonna have to start singing some Janis Joplin or some Lightning Hop. Yeah, yeah. Get down into some. Well, that kind of yeah. kind of takes me muddy waters. Yeah, absolutely. That kind of takes me back to where we first started off, and I was talking about uh, accepting my voice, and I think I'm starting to, you know, my old voice. I was just starting to accept and. Now I'm starting to accept the new one, so it's time to get back to making some music and getting comfortable with myself again. And if you hey, if you need any help with any of your web stuff or whatever, through this program, and I've learned so much now, I can, I could, I'd be happy to help out if you ever are stumped or something like that. So. Well, well, thank you, man. I may, I may holler at you. I'm, Absolutely. I'm ignorant. I'm ignorant to all this stuff. But see, like. Uh, uh, I mean, you got screaming internet because you see on your on the right over here, 
you're already 99% uploaded. Oh, you see shit. On the screen. Is that what that means? And you look at mine. Yeah, mine's 29. I'm on AT&T U-verse. And so I got to leave my computer up and running this page forever to get this my my part of the damn interview. Oh, jeez. But you're, yeah, you won't have to leave it up long. You got good internet service, whatever you did. Oh, that's that's good. Whatever service you got. Yeah, it's... It, In the middle of Saskatchewan, you beat the hell out of me. It's, exp <laughs> it's expensive, and I always gripe and complain about it, but, I mean, it's almost like an essential utility now these days. It so is. So I, whatever, 150 bucks a month, we got to pay for this, and... It is what it is, right? It's awesome, man. All right, Rocco. Well, I'm glad Steve turned us on. Yeah. I've really enjoyed meeting you and hearing your story. You're definitely a, a DDPY success story, you know, and you've, um, you're just getting started too, man. you got a long way to go, and uh, I hope your mother enjoys the program, and I hope your wife figures out who DDP <laughs> is. And, and, uh, <laughs> yeah exactly well thank you very much Vance uh, I wish you the best on your journey and with your new uh, your potential new career here I think you got a knack for this and you do a good job so um, thank you. keep going at it take care of yourself and shed those pounds and give them to me so I can I can, <laughs> I can bulk up a bit and uh, get stronger and get healthier so I need to get them back off. I've put 90 plus back on. I got to get it off, man. He'll do it. He'll do it. All right, it. dude. We'll get, a, get on that ice and catch some fish. <laughs> I will. Tell your son about the bourbon. All right, I, I will. Hey, now don't hang up till it's. Okay. Okay. You won't have. Yeah, don't close the window when Chrome until that damn deal says you're 100% uploaded. Okay. Then you can just close. You can, I mean, you can hang up the phone, but don't close the Chrome window. So do I hit. Uh... Yeah, we can hit you. Hit leave, leave when studio. You're done. Okay. Yeah, leave studio, and then it'll say. I mean, you'll be uploaded in a minute, but there'll be a, a message that says don't don't close the window, and then um, um, you know yours will be uploaded quickly, and then once it says a hundred percent uploaded, then you're good. Okay. Perfect. All right, man. Okay, thank you, my friend, and uh, I hope to talk again someday. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, right. we'll have to do it again. Have a follow-up. Absolutely. I'll take care and say hi to Mary for me. I uh, will. Okay. Thank you, Rocco. We'll yeah. see you, man. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the podcast today. I'm your host, Vance Hines of Transform with Vance, where transformations begin every day. Uh, please take a moment, if you will, to if you like the podcast, to subscribe and um follow and and uh, you can find us on social media as well either under Vance Hines or Transform with Vance uh, please tune in and subscribe to our feed you'll you'll be able to hear lots of transformation stories I'm in search of, of interviewing as many transformation as I can find so if you have a transformation that you would like to um, have have someone interview and, and have the uh, and, and appear on the podcast just send me the uh, the name and number message me and i'll reach out to them and try to get them here but uh, uh no matter what a better life begins on the mat uh, get on the mat and start your transformation today thank you